Hey guys, what's up, man? Tonight is the Drew Elliott edition of Death Metal Podcast. So we are going to be live with uh, the artist uh, Drew Elliott. Uh, Drew is, um, you know, behind the scenes, I feel in a way. Like, uh, you know, I, I'm sure people do know his name if they've got a certain early records. But I also noticed he was uncredited on some things, like some very important stuff. You know, like things that were important to me growing up, like uh, compilation records for thrash and death metal uh, releases. Ones that came out early in the game, the ones that were on like um, the early like Metal Blade ones and like New Renaissance records. So like this would be like an example of one right here. Speed Metal Hell. And then Drew... Drew was the, uh, the uh, artist on here. So his very distinctive style, which was on speed metal hell back in the early days, became, you know, a part of, for me to say like this, you know, like this is like an alluring looking record, first of all, because there's more than one band, there's more than one band on it. So, you know, I was always the variety kind of buyer. You know, the more I could get for my money when I was younger, the more I would try to get. So that's probably the same reason why I got into demos. Because in the back, you know, back of the counter, the demos were like half the price of the tapes or half, you know. Even records were like only a dollar or two more than the tapes. But I would buy more tapes because I could get two tapes instead of one record, you know, in a lot of cases. But only buy the record if I loved the band and there was no tape. But um, there was these records there, you know, a, a lot of we're going to show some of them tonight. And they were very important to somebody like me growing up as a metalhead. And they came, you know, like with the the thing is, some of these things came in the back, not on this particular one. I'm going to show one later. Oh, it does say cover art by Drew Elliott. That's awesome. Um, but back in the day, a lot of some a couple of these records came with addresses on the back. So that was a fucking gateway to uh, like literally like finding out about new, you know, being able to connect with the band directly. You would hear that one band on here. Regurgitation, uh, Pap Smear or Blood Feast or Prong or something. And it was like, wow, this is this is the band I'm going to write a letter to. Crazy kid letter. What's up, everybody? How's it going tonight? This is a death metal podcast episode. How's it going, Mark Riddick? One of the first extreme cassettes I picked up was featured Drew's art. It was a speed metal compilation uh, published by Metal Blade around '88. So what's up, everybody? We got Drew with us here. How's it going, Drew? How hey. you living? Good, good, good. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I could hear you fine, brother. How you been, man? It's good to see you. Um, I'm, I'm honored, actually, to have you on the show because, in a, in a way, like, it was records like this that, like, did a bunch of shit for me, you know what I mean? Awesome. That's so, great. yeah. I including, like I was mentioning, uh, certain records, they had the address of the band member on the back. So, like, for, right. at the time... You know, like I, I was fanboying it because I was a little kid. I was a little kid, you know. So I yeah, would yeah. write a letter to the band or something, and I'd be like, "Hey, I love your band," or, you know, "Do you guys have any other m music?" Or you know what I mean? Like it, there right, was right. an un, there was like an unknown at some point before the internet, right? It was like you oh, had to yeah. go to the library yeah. or like like weird yeah. places to pick up your info, record yeah, yeah. store yeah. doors. You know, like yeah. just. I, I mean, there was only so many magazines back then, too. Like there was, and if we used to take a trip to New York and get Kick Ass magazine, right? And you know, uh, Metal Forces was around back then. For sure. That's how I. That's how I learned about Hellhammer. I read, you know, this is the worst EP ever, and I was like, it's got to be good. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I know they panned yeah. Hellhammer, they panned Venom, they panned Mayhem. Yeah. And meanwhile, those bands yeah. are amazing, yeah, like, you know? Sounds great what, to me. I don't know. What's up, everybody? <laughs> I'm glad uh, tonight uh, to have you guys join us in the chat, too, with uh, myself and Drew. Um, like I said, I've been a big fan of Drew's for a while. What's up, Haunted Hotel? What's up, Gut Bag? <laughs> 
Uh, hey, what's up, Nobalone? Uh, everybody, um, Drew, you rule, longtime fan, uh, undoubtedly hey, one of my earliest awesome. influences. Awesome. Human Brisket, what's up, Evan Williams? What's up, Five Shinobi, Pearson Pearson, all the death metal fun uh, funk alumni? So, you know, we're going to talk, yeah, we're going to go through, I'll, I'll do my best to do a, semi-chronologically, but basically, like, you have one period of time, Drew, before we get to it, like, the, I noticed, I was like, there is so many fucking releases from this one year, dude, I'm just like, one yeah, after yeah. another, man. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. we're going to talk about that tonight. Um, yeah. Basically, um, let me just fix my mic a little bit. <coughs> I've had a cold for a few days, but I'm like, I, I loaded myself up with whatever cold meds I could and <laughs> drugs just to do this tonight. And I was a very, you know, we talked about this because um, you had dropped a bombshell on one of my other live live things, which I'm going to talk about tonight because I'm sure no one saw it. But basically, um, you mentioned something about like a logo, but we're going to talk about that. <laughs> and then, uh, like, I was like, "What?" I, I went back to watch it um, yesterday because I was like, "I have to, I have to like double, I have to verify this because I, I'm, I have to verify my information here," you know. But Drew, going back with you and you know your earliest like times like touching and getting into drawing and stuff, was there anything? Was there any like linchpin moment where you're like? I want to be, you know, like I, I'm an artist or I'm a little kid drawing stuff a lot or. I mean, not really. I mean, I just always did it. I, you know, that's just I think most people who are artists, they kind of always have done it. You know, it's like I always say it's really practice, not inspiration. You just keep doing it all the time. Okay. And that's how you get good. Uh, I'm I'm still trying to get good, you know, but I'm I'm, I'm getting there, you know. But uh, yeah, there was no real like linchpin moment but a, a kind of funny moment like one of the reasons that i got into like the heavy metal art well number one i loved heavy metal but i started seeing some covers like like hallow's eve and uh. i was like i could do this like I'm like, uh. <laughs> like, like, like come on i could do this. oh that's that's cool though i mean if you oh, felt yeah, yeah. at that time you saw like you were like man, I can draw or do a painting or something as good yeah, as this yeah. Hallow's Eve cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's That's like, interesting, you know, man. Did, yeah. Were you buying the Hallow's Eve record at the time? No, at the time I did not because, like, you know how when you bought records because of album covers? That of was course. That was cover that I would buy, you know. It was like, it's like, eh, it looks kind of cheesy. Well, but, you know uh, what? I bought your, <laughs> I bought these records because of your thing, your art, dude, literally. Yeah, this yeah. was why, I, I mean, beyond it being a compilation, too. Right, it was right. like, all right, this this You're... looks fucking legit. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you know, yeah, like in a Hollow's Eve or a Metal Church era, like I would look at those covers and I'd be like, what was I it? Know. I can't. Is it Obsessor, the one that has like the streets of Marshall amps? <laughs> it's like so stupid looking. You know, it's like I was like, all right, you know, there's a place for me in this world. I think I could handle this. I could do it. You know? Yeah. But, and then I mean, any... I wasn't that either you know i was like 21 years old you know uh you know struggling doing it but um yeah okay. so was so there like, an art history behind you of going to an art school yeah or I, went, kinda... I went to an art technical school you know like like a tech school it wasn't really a, a real art school All right. but um but i went there and i you know i, I met like i'm glad i went there because i met some of my best friends um my best friend is still my best friend i met him there uh so yeah so i you know i went there and then after i graduated my girlfriend at the time said we should do something crazy to get you know like to to make it or whatever like okay. move to L like move to la right and i said that's a great idea i'm gonna do let's do that and then she backed out and my friend gordon said yeah let's do that so me and him moved oh to wow and that's Boston. how people most people try to become stars you know like I'm yeah gonna go to la well, you know? the labels were there you know the labels were there i, I mean i i contacted johnny z john zula here when i lived right. in um in delaware county and you know it, we had a nice conversation and like at the time it was funny he said like 
It's like, yeah, the dudes from Anthrax are doing this other project, and maybe you could do that. Oh, so, wow. If, which, you know, which never... Which Had, can I ask a question? This would be a valid question. Like, how would an artist take what they had back then and show the person, like a Johnny I, Z? It was weird. You had to go to, like, these places, kind of like a, like a FedEx place. Okay. And I actually got, uh, like, big photos of my paintings, like mm. scans, and, like, they took a photo of them. So I had these, like... And I just sent them to, like... To Megaforce, and I sent them to uh, Slagle and Metal Blade. Like, how many would you send? Would you send like a portfolio? Just, would you send like just three like photos? Three, three pictures, you know, like three or four, you know, like because hmm. however, however many I could afford to get printed. Understandable. Fact, that, that kind of stuff was expensive. It's not yeah. like now where it's like cost you like, you know, it's not like now where you could do it in your house basically. Yeah, it costs you like it costs you like ten bucks a piece or something crazy. Mm. Uh, so, and so, yeah, so I sent them out and, um, I don't know whether, where, whether John really looked at them or not, but I called him on the phone, you know, he's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So kind of that kind of thing. And then when my friends talked about, uh, you know, me and my friend talked about moving to California, then I contacted Metal Blade. I sent myself the Metal Blade and, um, you were talking earlier about the addresses being on. And like, I don't know what record it was, but like their actual address was on, like not a right. PO, like their address was on there. So when I moved there, I went to the office and just showed up. And Slagle saw me. He was super nice, super great. And um, gave me a bunch of records for free. I did, I did, uh, <laughs> I did that logo. I don't know if the logo you're going to talk about, I, the Predator logo, <laughs> on like one of the worst covers of all time. Yes. But that logo, I did that logo. That was like the first thing. Is that thing. your entryway to working with Metal I, That's the first thing I ever did. For, yeah. For, so for, did you for show up? You showed from, up to Brian Slagle's house, basically, and with your no, art his in office, tow? His, his office? office? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was like an apartment complex. I lived in the same kind of apartment complex. It's the same kind of apartment complex that you see in the uh, in the Lemmy movie. Uh huh. You know where he lived? They're all the same out there. They're all there's a lot of like you know that level of middle class or lower middle class. Right. They're all the same, but they they must have like rented offices on the bottom floor of this one. And I got in, and he like I said, he saw me, and um. It's a shame that that relationship didn't really keep going. I couldn't keep it going. I don't know. I mean, I did a couple clunkers, I think, you know, which didn't help. And and um, and then I when I got involved with Anne, I did a lot of stuff. So I was all right. Let's show doing... the people though. Yeah, let's let's take this a little more visually right now too. So basically, when you first started and you went to Brian Slagal's, uh office is this something that he like brought you to draw was this the no first thing? yeah that's it was well not the first yeah, thing I, but that wasn't that's one of the first that's probably the second thing the second he thing doing, okay yeah he was doing this punk thing so uh yeah so he asked me to do to if i wanted to do it so i did and um yeah so that's that's how that worked out would this and, be you know, the first the time, thing then? I mean, this, no, this, my, at the time, I loved that cover. I thought it was great. I, I don't know if it really holds up these days, but, you know, at the time. I, I mean, I, this know. is pretty tight for, like, a you know, a, a like compilation. A 20, 20 year old kid, you know, it's not bad. It's not bad. You know, so I you're think, saying he made you draw what they say out there in the wild, that this is the worst album cover in all of metal or whatever. Oh, so yeah. You're saying you drew the <laughs> yeah. logo for this? <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't disagree. I can't disagree with that. Okay. I so mean, Predator, it, Easy Prey, and then yeah. you, so what year was this? Like 85, you maybe made it and it came out in 86-ish? Like, yeah, 80, 84, 85, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It did, when you were making this logo, did you have any idea that this cover no. was going to look like this? No, no idea. No, no? idea. Yeah. 
Yeah. It was just like, hey, this band, they're called Predator. Yeah, yeah, we need a logo. This is an infamous, this is has now has like an infamous status to it, this album Oh cover, my God, you know? it's like kind of, it's it just came up on my feed like this week. And, I, you know, yeah. I, I, I love, you know, sometimes I like, I didn't comment on that one. On that, it that came was, up in mind like, too because my boy um crawling and vomits he was reenacting the same spot he went to that same spot with <laughs> guitar and he was like hanging out there crawling and vomits he was reenacting the same spot he went to that same spot with guitar and he I, was like hanging out there is that crawling echoing brother vomits, he was reenacting yeah. the same spot sorry. he went to that same spot with guitar and I, he was like all right sorry about that sorry about that freaks <laughs> um yeah, and I've never heard the record. I have no idea what it sounds like. You never even heard the record. Okay, <laughs> interesting. I mean, I had it because they. So gave this it was to your me. first work for Metal Blade. That's my first thing I ever did. Yeah, for for any, I think for anybody. Wow. For any cool. label, yeah, like for any label, like. Uh, what was the compensation of you doing a record cover? Like, dude, let's say I back in the day, you know what? I don't. I barely remember. It wasn't a lot. I mean, like. When I worked for Ann, I got like a few hundred dollars of a pop. And that okay. was enough to pay my rent and some. And I was happy, you know, I was a pig and shit. Like I thought it was I thought it was great. You're you like know? I lived I'm using my Angeles. art skills. Yeah, and yeah. Then, yeah uh, to, just... to go one step further too, about asking about something that has like a little bit more multicolor. Like, were you a painting guy in the guy? Because this looks like a painting to me. It is a painting, but I, I, you know, like, I never really considered myself a painter. Like, I just was, I thought coloring in drawings, basically. Okay. You know, I feel like, like, like in my old age, I'm getting like figuring painting out a little bit, you know. So like, but uh, yeah, but back then, I, I would never, I wouldn't consider myself a painter. Okay. No, I'm just asking if yeah. there was a painting. Like it's obviously we didn't. Yeah, have, I mean, we didn't have Photoshop. Page is a painting. Blood feast is a painting. I mean, they're, right. you know, they're all paintings. You know, for sure. Because you know, most like back in back in those days, record covers pretty much had to be color. They had to be a painting, and they had to be color. Yeah, yeah, it had to be in color. Like you know, it wasn't. we this is pre Chris Moyen. <laughs> you know. And then that we had a uh, comment here, um, Gordon Helmer. Yo, Drew, <laughs> yo, Drew, it's Gordon. The host talked too much. Tell him about when we fell off the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I moved back to the East Coast, because me and Gordon were rock climbing, and I fell off a cliff. And Gordon oh. fell off a cliff, and I was dead. And um, I dragged wow. myself back to the roadside and got rescued by some people. And, oh, uh, shit. Yeah. And, yeah. And then I was, like, laid up for a while. And then I I moved back to Pennsylvania. And I stayed. And I stayed. Yeah. yeah. Are so. you primarily from Pennsylvania? That's where you yeah, were yeah. born? Yeah, I'm from PA. Yeah, I'm from PA. Yeah. So you used the back of the record covers. And, uh, you know, by the time you decided, okay, I'm going to move and you know use my skills in la yeah then you use the back of these record covers to connect with the owners or yeah i, I and i'm trying to remember how i got in touch with ann i don't even yeah remember. i wanted to ask that too i think so, I, I, new I, renaissance records after you worked with metal blade you did like all these releases like there's so yeah, yeah. many releases yeah yeah and there's just one after another so I, you it were almost like a i wanted to I, I was looking over their entire discography before this too, and I was like, "Was he their only staff guy, basically?" But I was like, eh, "I see one or two others there." So it was, you know, but there was, yeah, it seemed I mean, like I, you were the main guy, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, I don't think the well, maybe it's different now, but you know, back then, I mean, record covers were done by bands' friends, right? You know, oh, my girlfriend paints, you know what I mean? That was like done like that, you know, like, like, uh, I, I think that's how the Veermock cover was done. Like, you know, I, we were talking about me doing that. Yeah. And then, and then Ann was like, oh, no, the friend, they want their friend's art. So I, was like, I saw oh. that within the discography, you know, I was yeah, like, yeah, I without, what, I then, like, with, you know, without even seeing what I was doing there, like, yeah, we want, 
So I was like, okay, fine. You know, I mean, what can I do? I mean, yeah, the shark attack one, right? Yeah, the shark attack one. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's what I was going to ask next. Like, so how did you hook up with Ann uh, from? Well, like I said, I can't really remember how we contacted. It might, I mean, it might have been something as weird as like the LA Weekly, like mm -hmm. you know, like like you know, the, our city paper that used to be. Right. Uh, and I, and she lived close to where I was living, like a bike ride away. Right. So I just, you know. <laughs> Called her, rode my bike over there, talked to her, showed her my stuff. And one of the, and like the, uh, one, the, this, this guy. Right. This guy was one of the, remember I told you about those things that I, I uh, printed up and sent out to people? Right. This was one of them. Oh, okay. So, so you showed then, her that. So I show, and she goes, she goes, well, I'm, you know, the ambulance is funny. She was like, well, I'm doing this thrash metal attack thing. It's like, they're, they're almost like punks anyway. So we'll use this. Mm. I'm like, okay, cool. So, you know, I mean, that's how it worked back then. So I'm going to show a bigger version of that too. Oh yeah. Thrash yeah, metal go. attack, a collection of 12 bands. And at the time, Anvil Bitch, Aggression, Blood Feast, Defcon, Dissexult. Hell Witch, Necrophagia, Necropolis, Postmortem, Rabid, War God, and Wormok. Which you did re you did covers and artwork for like at least half of this compilation too. <laughs> About yeah. approximately, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because like cool. <clears throat> there was a guy she was using before me who did that one with like the chimpanzees on the cover. Mm, yeah, I wanted to ask about the one that. Where, where like there's a hand holding a guitar with like I think has barbed wire for strings. Uh huh. Yeah. So like she was using him. <laughs> the funny thing is, he his artwork looked looked pretty professional. So he was probably she was probably saving money. This by, one. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. I guess that's I guess that's a, a homage to the Uriah Heap, you know, where chimpanzees are the devil for some reason. But. Mm. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I don't. I never met that guy or anything. But like I said, I I have a my, a sneaking suspicion that he was a professional guy who was probably a little bit more expensive than oh, me. Oh, okay. So she just said, "All right, I'll get this kid." And you kind of knocked him out of the box. Yeah, yeah. Like I'll just get this kid to do it, you know, for cheaper, and you know, like so. That's that's how that worked out. Yeah, know? and let me ask you too with with the bands that you drew the covers for and or the comps, etc being around Ann or anything did you were you able to hear any of the music not before no most okay. of the time not before and and the thing was like i said like I, it worked out most of the time for me but uh i mean basically she would just tell me the name of the band and the name of the record and i would just do it and wow. sometimes it worked out and sometimes it didn't you know like uh and and i think one of the things i I don't know if it's a regret, but I think a thing that I don't know how to say it. I don't know if they hurt me or whatever. But since I was doing, <laughs> and, <laughs> and since I was doing so much artwork for her, I I tried to switch things up. Right. Because I didn't. I didn't. I felt. I thought bands are not going to want the same stuff. Everybody's record looking the same. You know, right. So, I did a lot of different things, but I think I think in some ways that kind of hurt me because like I didn't have like a, uh, a a style that people could depend on, sort of. You know mm. what I mean? Okay. You mean like the thing? So, like so saying, would this be an example where you had something super bright, kind of like this, but then maybe you had something a little darker, like this? Well, I don't know. To me, like they're kind of related. You know? Like, yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, sort of. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. But like, like the things that I consider mine, like uh -huh. really 100% me, are like that first thing you showed, the Speed Metal Hell. Right. Uh, oh. I love that one. I love, I love, my favorite cover is In Destroy. That's, that's the, my favorite one I've ever done. For that's Frank. your favorite cover of all. This yeah, one? for In, that's my favorite one. I, I just think that worked out really good. And at uh, the time, 
so the medias you were using at the time, you would draw this with a pencil and then you would basically just color it. Okay, so these, I that's an ink drawing. And back then, I what I did was uh, like hand separation. So, so every so you would like have the drawing, uh -huh. and then you'd have a bunch of like uh, like uh, uh, plastic sheets, right? They and on every you sheet, lay them you over would, on top of each other. Kind you of would like every sheet you would like paint them, you would paint in black like the color. So like there would be a sheet that was just the green. Right. And you'd label it what green it was supposed to be, like with the Pantone numbers. And you say, okay, this one it says. Then you put another sheet that's the purple, and another sheet that's the yellow. And that's how that's how the speed metal hell was done. And you and would draw. How... You would draw the. Um, you would draw yeah. the that. What's up, Craig? You would. Uh, you would draw. Uh, what's up, uh, John Verica? Um, you guys, you would draw those pieces and then just lay them over the top of each other with all like within vision to say like this is what it's going to look like even by saying, yeah yeah like, I mean like they these would, colors they, yeah yeah that's awesome dude yeah yeah so the so when the uh, the printer would like take a make a I guess like make a plate of like each color right and then they print them all together and that's it's kind of like the way you do a silk screen shirt now right yeah it reminds me of it. The same concept, but it's for this. Would you do but, it yeah. all in black and white back then, and and do, 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 and say this would be a this will be a color? Yeah. Wow, that's cool. And you got to choose the colors. Well, it's like a piece of plastic with black. What's that? You got to yeah, choose so that, the colors so and that everything. Piece, that green would be a piece of plastic. Yes, and I would then you'd like get a Pantone book, and uh -huh. it have a every color had a number. And you write it on that piece of plastic, say, this is how the printer, this is the color it's supposed to be. Oh, that's so cool, just... man. Was yeah, that, yeah. Um, so they, they was were... that vellum? Yes, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That's super cool, man. D yeah, Drew yeah, they're, did they're, that? They're... Sick. Yeah, Drew did amazing stuff. Acetate <laughs> sheets. Black fill gets yeah. designed for a specific <laughs> color. Color separation plates can be made for offset printing. What's up, Craig? um so the uh let's see who else anyone um so basically with these covers like i said i have to say these these were alluring to me as a buyer and the, I, i'm a buyer side guy you know so like right, right. when i saw not not everything but say when i saw this maybe when i was younger speed metal you know and me, you know, seeing and, and yeah, yeah. loving that, that, that is yeah. like, that is one of my that is one of my least favorite covers of all time. <laughs> I hate that cover so much. Right. I can't stand it. It and haunts of, me. It, a lot of these covers though came out around the same time. So I want to say, right. did you spend? Would how much? You know, would you spend hours well, and hours thing, a day? Would you spend? I, that's the thing that sucks about that cover is at the time. It took me a long time to do it. And I remember at the time being very happy. But in retrospect, I'm like, cringe. I just can't stand it. I hate mm. every time it comes up. Oh, man. <laughs> Even when you posted it, I was like, oh, God. Oh, he's like, oh, I wish no. I could forget about that. <laughs> but it's, it's a good a... record, though. There's, a, there's good stuff on there, which makes it even worse. <laughs> Right, because if that I, thing looked like Speed Metal Hell, I'd be that'd be so much so exciting. Well, Speed Metal Hell Volume Three made up for things, didn't it? Yeah, in a way? yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially with the content on here: Pap yeah. Smear, Wehrmacht, Dream Death, Regurgitation, Necrophagia, Blood Feast, The Kill, Outrage, Prong, Prong, dude. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah, and like you know, a, I don't know, I don't know, like talk you know i'm i know you know a lot of old heads but like like to me like it never it always seemed like for a long time new renaissance didn't have the debate the best reputation now people look back and they love all this stuff you know yeah. and the, and the thing that was kind of amazing too was that ann was a very much of a heavy metal person you know like dio like she like king diamond like right. so she kind of 
I don't want to say locked into all this stuff. Yeah, I wanted to ask about Anne. Like, where did she get these fucking demos? Uh, yeah, and I mean, this, like, like I, so many releases in one or two years, too. Like, you're yeah, talking I, about a lot of money. That would be a good question for, like, for, like, Adam from Blood Feast. Like, how did that work out? You know what I mean? Like, how did... Did they just send their stuff to anybody or everybody and she's the one that picked it up? Mm. You know, because, like, she wasn't like a, you know, like an underground. Per- I mean, you know, right. in a way, there was no such thing yet as an underground, really. It was just bubbling up, kind of, to me. Yeah. That's my impression, you know? But uh, she yeah. just was in the right place at the right time. She just, yeah, she was just the right place and she scooped that stuff up and she saw something in it, you know, like, you know. Well, you know what, though? You were in the right place at the right time, too. Oh, man. absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> that's everything. That's that's everything. You know, like, when people say, well, how do you get, how would I get involved in this? Like, I mean, number one, don't ever ask me business advice about artwork and heavy metal because I'm a punk rock person at heart. I just, like, shake, handshake kind of guy. I'm not a business yeah. person, you know. But, you know, I, I said, well, I guess go back in time when things are starting <laughs> and, like, be there. I was like, I don't know what to tell you. I was like, you know, there's really no way. You're just in the right place. You rode yeah, your bicycle to Anne's house with your prints, basically. Yeah. And then next thing you know, it, you, devol- you evolved a relationship with her as far as, like, a business relationship to for her to buy artwork for you from you. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's the basically... same thing and the same thing happened to me when I came back. Uh-huh. Because I don't even remember again, I don't remember how this happened, but like the ex mortis guys contacted me. Right. And then I started working with them. And and again, like so if you look at like the Steve Mental Hell and the Indestroy and the Ex Mortis, to me that's all like connected. Like that's okay. all you know what I mean? Like and that's kind of the stuff that I still like go back to. Like that's what I'm kind of uh, I don't know what to say shooting for. But I mean, like... you have a, you have some diversity in your art because we have a cover that like, that like does this, you know? Yeah, yeah. Post well, that was their idea, and they loved it. But the like, missing that was, link. That, yeah, that was their idea. So they fed you but, the idea for this one. Yeah, because like that guy left the band. Okay. <laughs> so, that, so, so it was a bust on that guy He's right a right player. yeah interesting dude yeah I mean, yeah I, this is one, one of the more if interesting you ones the, if you look at the picture of the band on the back of uh coroner's office like it, that's that's him you know like so gotcha. Yeah, and yeah, then so. also the one of some of the inserts too like this would just be like an overview in a weird way I mean, you could see how many of your albums are on these inserts. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. So there's Indestroy, you know? Yep, yep, There's yep. um, There's that dinosaur down there. There's Speed yep, Metal yep. Hell. It's like, it's like three. On the here. other side, Blood, yeah, yeah. Blood Feast, uh, Thrash Metal Attack, the Helion. That goddamn. Necrophagia. That goddamn Savage Kill. Face Fate. Oh, and, so, there's, and, so there's another and, one here that's yours? And that Hellion one is another one that I put in that, you know, like the stuff I like. Right there with the battery, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I don't know if you have, I have that one here. Like, I like this one a lot. You could back it up a little bit. Yeah, it's a killer one, man. Yeah, yeah. It, and of course, like, it's funny because like, you know, Anne was she liked it you know but she was also like again she's a heavy metal person and she's a it's a female fronted band so i think she wanted to be like you know like you like attractive or whatever and i wasn't supposed to be drawing her but it right. did, you know like you know i was thinking of hellion like some what would a hellion look a like fucking hellion yeah yeah and then like you know if you see all of the, her other record covers it's like pictures of her yeah you know? So I don't think she loved more that, in but... like a Betsy bitch zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like it. I think that's a great one. Like that's that's one of my faves. So it's like that kind of stuff and like Speed Metal Hell. Uh, of course, uh, Saints Revenge. Yeah, I let's like... talk about that one. I have that on hand here too. 
so this this record this was the record that i wrote to of my first band from so it was the band was necrovore actually oh, so, nice. yeah so satan's revenge part two where you had ripping corpse damien vacant grave anger watt darkness tempter severe warning necrovore sacred death and morbid angel yeah so you i mean this was pretty pivotal like with between the ripping corpse necrovore morbid angel right there i mean yes. you, this is a pivotal fucking de- you know record dude you know? i know i know like again and you know like we're talking about like how she got this stuff together like right i have no recollection of her being like super psyched like oh my gosh this uh-huh. you know what i mean like she was just like i got another group of demos well, the, on this record in particular too on this satan's revenge record if yeah. you listen to the necrovore stuff on here they yeah. worked right from the master on this because right, everything right. Ev- after that basically they did it sounded different you know yeah yeah this on the yeah. full yeah so this is the actual record the satan's oh, revenge nice. i don't part even two. have one of those i can't find mine and then um the funny thing is i've seen a, like a few of these in the wild only yeah. And then the odd, this is the oddest part about this record. And anyone out there, if you could answer this, maybe let me know. Mine is a test press. Okay. But every okay. single one I've ever seen is a test press. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Weird. Weird. That's, I thought that was weird, too, man. Yeah, like, yeah. I was like, why is every single Satan's Revenge? I, like, I tried to get another one, and it was like a test press. I was like, what? That's wild. Yeah. That's so weird. I was like, how many test presses are running around New Jersey of Satan's Revenge? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of weird. I wonder how I wonder how many do you know how many copies they released of that? I have no idea, dude. I mean, they're kind of an enigma. The the new renaissance thing is a little bit of an enigma, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe she had someone tapped into the underground scene around her, maybe. That's possible. Not that I know of. I I think I would have known him back then if if they were, but Yeah, you would have known who it like, was for I mean, being around her. I mean, like like when I met her, I mean, she was literally running it out of her apartment okay you know and then and then then they had an office in burbank later uh but you know at first they were just really she was just doing it out of her office and i she she had an assistant come by you know just but but, they uh, would just get like to go to local record pressing plants and like ring boxes of records i guess i mean like i said i wasn't involved in that much of that stuff you know what i mean right but, uh, you know, I mean, I, I guess I could sit You might not and, show up on the day, like, when one of the records she put out, like, came out where it had your cover on it or something, or? No, not really. Not okay. really. She just, like, yeah, handed it really. to you when you like, did your next just, commission? Like, you know, like, You're like, here you go. Here's one of your records you yeah, did. Yeah, pretty much. Like, pretty much. Like, you know, like, you know, say, oh, next time I showed up, she's like, oh, these came. You know, you want. And, like, she even, like, I think sometimes she gave me, like, cutouts even. You know what I mean? So it's right. Like, like, you know. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's shoestring budget. I, you know, I didn't, I didn't really fault her for it. Whatever, you know. But uh, like I said, she saved my life, you know, because like that steady work. Yeah, without the steady work. The, without having to do the hustle, you know, and the grind, was like really great. You know. Let was, me really... ask you. This is the most like important thing I got to ask about a new Renaissance. Everything came out between like eighty six, eighty seven, eighty eight. It was like so many releases, like everything I'm gonna show tonight, like like sixty percent of it was all the eighty seven. You know, this is from yeah, eighty seven. Yeah, yeah. It says yeah. your artwork is from eighty six, and you got it on the cover there, though. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. But you know, like this is eighty six, eighty seven. Also, you know, like let me see here, Savage Steel. I can't see the year on it, but. So, yes, it's like the same. It's like it, that's early because like I can remember where I lived when I did those. Uh huh. So I had two apartments, at, at two places I lived in that in that time frame. And that was at the first place. So. Um, oh yeah. You know so, anything about who did the new Renaissance logo? Just out of curiosity, that wasn't you. I right? think uh, honestly, dude, I think that's clip art. Oh, it's just clip art. Okay. Yeah, I think I think it's just clip art. My friend Francisco uh, from Jamming Out All Badass wants to know: Are you still in contact with her? No, um, I I have contacted her, and um, 
I went to see Hellion when they played Philadelphia. Like, God, how long ago was that? Like, I don't know. Ten. I mean, uh, Chris Gamble was there. You know, uh, of course, and it was, a and it was kind of funny. Vil- and it was kind of funny because, like, you know, I think she was just all in her own head because she was, you know, it was her band playing. Okay. And I got this weird feeling, like, and of course, I look a lot different. I don't even know if she. You don't think really she recognized like, who I who I actually was? Yeah, you know, you're a little bit of a chameleon. I have to admit, dude. You know. Oh yeah, I mean, like I had I had like a buzz cut when I met when I was hanging out with her, right? You know, you know. So like, uh, and then I had like blonde hair when I came back to when I like met the ex Mortis guys. I looked like a little little punk rocker. Guy. Listen, while this yeah. episode's still early, I wanted to announce to everybody since I got a lot of watchers. Next week, we're going to have an interview with uh, Noxious Ruins rec- uh, Records and Productions and Magazine. So if anybody wants to tune in okay. next week on Saturday, we're doing an interview with Brian and maybe West uh, from Noxious Ruins. So I wanted to make the announcement during this live show. Because I need to start doing that from now on. Next Saturday, this is the show. Uh, they make an amazing magazine, full color art, and really killer stuff. Yeah, I've been uh, in usually there. Usually comp tape. You've been in there, huh? Yeah, I've been in. I, I, I was in one of those. In Destroy, what happened? What In Destroy has that classic speed metal thrash drumming, like Exciters, Rain, and Plastic. So yeah. this dude worked in the 80s. Yeah, I mean, New Renaissance is amazing. Yeah, so this is a this is Noxus Ruin. Yeah, and I have a I have a painting in there. Nice, so, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they they make amazing magazines. Yeah, it's a really great. It's a it's really amazing. It's high not, quality, it's yeah, high, high quality, great. glossy. So yep. next week, Brian uh, will be on uh, to do awesome. a live episode with us. So if anybody awesome. wants to check it out. Yeah, yeah. It will definitely be cool. He's been putting out a lot of cool releases, and I thought he would be a good guest. And I thought, um, you know, yeah. so let's let's talk about necrophagia a little bit. In the early okay. days of the necrophagia stuff, you did the, uh, something before the album. You did like the yeah. necrophagia demo stuff. Would this be the earliest piece, or this? Uh, well, I, that that actually is a sketch I did for the album. Oh, okay. Which one? This? No, the the second one. Okay. The Nightmare Continues. It became the Nightmare Continues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it became, it came, it went backwards and they used it. He used it for to release something else. Okay. So this would have been the original Seasons of the Dead cover? That was going to, that was going to, that's the first thing I sent him. Oh, cool. And like, he, and like the thing about working with Killjoy, Killjoy was he was like the only guy that really had a vision for what he wanted. You know what I mean? Like he, he was you know, the most hands on of all this. Yeah, like, yeah. All these releases. You know, he's the kind of guy that like he's like, oh, I'm making this record and I already know what it's going to look like kind of thing, you know? Uh-huh. So. So, yeah, we worked we work as close as any you know as i work with anybody you know but i mean it's still like it's still pretty basic was it like a letter writing and phone call thing basically yeah yeah letter write like mostly like phone calls you know right and um and he did go out to la to do press so i, I met him there okay uh, yeah so that was that was cool yeah and i mean they're on some of these comps you know yeah yeah and yeah. then later i mean obviously i'm i would have to say probably one of your most known in a weird way covers would you yeah. think seasons yeah, of that's the, dead? the the uh i don't know if the logo the, is era but yeah yeah and that's the the one with the weird moon on it yeah that's what i mean like this has a couple iterations is this the most that's the, the original original okay that, this is so this is the most that's original the real version. one that's the real one gotcha only only the ugly moon is real only <laughs> right and when it like how does this happen though like do you get involved with that moon or oh no I, I don't know who reissued that okay I don't, that's a reissue from somebody but 
I don't. I don't even. That's not New Renaissance, right? I, I have no clue, dude. There, this thing has been pressed so many different times. Yeah, I know. That's the original one. Yeah. So this being the original, so he kind of fed so you this idea: what... the zombies eating people. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, come on. It's pretty, pretty. It's you know, and, and Rich, it's pretty run of the mill, you know, idea. But you know, he still wanted to look the way he wanted to look. Yeah, it's pretty sick, dude. Yeah, thanks. Was there a was was there a story on the false liberty art being an other hardcore art you worked with? Yes. <laughs> the, Bring well, it on, brother. Well, I mean, okay. The story with false liberty is that uh, I was when I lived in L.A. I, I you know, I was a metalhead as a as a young guy, and then when I went to art school, I met a bunch of people that were like into punk. So then I expanded my taste. I liked a lot of different things. Right. So then when they moved to LA, um, although I was working with these labels, a lot of shows I was going to were like punk shows. And I worked, I used to do drawings for a lot of fanzines a lot, right. and a lot of punk fanzines. So back then you would get like maximum rock and roll and they just have a list of like zines. Right. And I would just write them and be like, I do artwork, blah, 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 you know what I mean? And like, so I would just do little drawings for them. And I don't know if Greg was doing a zine or he was just in the, or if they were just in the back of the magazine, whatever. Uh -huh. But somehow I wrote them or they wrote me and I ended up working, doing the cover. And um, the funny thing about that was, I did it, forgot about it. I mean, they were like 14 years old, you know, when they're in their okay. band. But then I was at a Con 8 show, and I was talking to Stephen O'Malley, and then Greg Anderson from Sun came up, and Stephen O'Malley goes, you know who this is? This is Drew Elliott. And Greg goes, I know he did the seven inch cover for my band when I was like 14. Oh, so yeah. So it's for, so Greg from sun was in that band. He was in false, false liberty. liberty. Yeah. And you really know, cool. for all that time, all that span of time, no clue. I had no clue. I had no idea. You it's know, a small but, world, right? Hey, yeah. Yeah. That's the whole thing about this is a tiny, tiny world. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, like with the, with all the different, you know, I mean, do you feel, you know, like, do you feel that you, you're, you have like a, I notice over time too, if we go to like your newer stuff, your older stuff, you know, you look at, you kind of have like a very distinctive, like monster style zombie thing going on, you know, which is kind of like your signature in a weird way. You don't yeah. always do it. You don't yeah. always do it, but I see it like here and yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I got like you know, I got, I got a, I get a vibe that I'm trying to do, you know. Definitely. Uh, yeah, like, like one of the things I wanted to say is that the media like, changes, but you, you know, you, you have like you could kind of see like your art when it's not like you don't even know it's you, you know, which is I all, hope so. that means I mean, like I a guitar player playing a song. Yeah. You know? I hope so. I mean, I hope, I hope, I hope so. You know, like, right. people seem to, like I said, you know, it's, it's very weird. You know how this, this world works. It's like, I'm, I feel like I'm okay. Like I'm an okay artist, you know? And a lot of people are like, they associate my art with records that they love. Right. And you just got to kind of accept that, you know, like people talk about like the first Blood Feast record. I'm like, right. that, re that painting is OK. It's kind of shitty, you know, really. But <laughs> but, you know, you love the record, so you love it. OK, fine. You know, right, Base Eight, I always liked, you know, but like the first record, I, I never really care for, you know, but mm. I, but, you know, like the thing that I was. So we're what talking was, about this record. You yeah. 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 Kill yeah. for pleasure. Yeah, it's awful. Awful. I mean, I don't think it's awful though. I mean, it's pretty. Yeah, sick, yeah, I know. Dude. I mean, like I said, there's a lot know. going on here, yeah, and then, yeah. yeah, I mean, once you hear it too, you're just like, God damn. Yeah, and like, um, but I was just trying to figure out what the hell I was doing then, because that's like that's pretty early on, like my first stuff, and um, and all the people that inf like, I don't know what your 
thoughts are about this, but like, I mean, in heavy metal, heavy metal, there wasn't really underground artists. You know really. what I mean? Like, like the, all the guys that I liked were coming from like a punk background. So like, I, I more kinda, so. Like, you know, like obviously, you know, like the guy, the man, Pusshead. Right. You know, like he was a guy that I was really into. He was a punk guy. Yeah, and then like uh, Jeff Gaither. Yep. You know. Which definitely, that, yeah, kind of let off a punk, uh, like a Robert Williams meets punk vibe. Yeah, yeah. and then like R.K. Sloan, like I really liked. Nice. And then, uh, of course, I like Mark Rude stuff. For sure, dude. So, so these were yeah, like, that's super punk. Yeah, and then of course, like uh, Savage Pencil, you know, I liked him. So like uh, me, these, what's these that? What's the, that one? I don't know that one. <laughs> that's, a, that's a that's a big black record called Headache. Oh okay. Yeah. Cool. So like so so that was like the stuff that I thought to me they they were my kind of my what I wanted to be their pe their peers. I wanted to be one of those guys. Okay. You know, you know, and like you could even kind of see it like in the necrophagia, like the main guy, he's not really he's not really a skull like he's kind of a stylized version of a skull because right. i was like all right how do i make this look like something and i you know i wouldn't do that necessarily now but back then i was like trying to put a t twist on thing and i was a kid you know so like i, I don't really know what the hell i'm doing and the same <laughs> thing with the same thing with same thing with the blood feast like you can kind of see like there's a little pus head influence in there, like the mm. line work in the mouth and stuff. It's like, what the fuck is that? You know what I mean? But, but you know, like, you know, like I said, maybe I'm just... just a little, you know. But you got yeah, you yeah, have yeah, your yeah. own you have your own things going on in the background here. Sure, you got sure, these impaled sure. people and yeah, yeah. The I'm band's just name. About, I'm just talking about like the techniques. You know what I mean? And For the sure. stylization of like what the face what a face looks like and all that kind of stuff you know so i was like it was pretty primitive you i'm know? a little pretty... intrigued by the the um ha the way you made stuff too though so you like had to kind of pull these colors together after the drawings and kind of put them on top of well each this other. is a painting that, that's a painting though. that's, a, that's painting? a painting okay yeah that's a painting like can we talk a little bit about your painting too versus like drawings too um do you have any kind of like specifics even maybe to this day or back then where you would use like specific like paint brushes or styles of you know kinds of paint no no i mean like it's acrylics or water or what, what's what's your, I, I, uh... I paint with acrylic uh you know i mean you know you just use the brush that you need for the for whatever you're doing right. you know you're doing eyelashes you need a little tiny brush <laughs> it's, right. it's just as simple as that really um yeah but but uh, but i do do things on um i paint on watercolor blocks okay because they're just easy to store because they're small and they're light instead of having like a bunch of canvases around okay. you know because i just have an apartment here like i don't have like tons and tons of space you know so yeah so i do that and then like with a I do a lot of, when I do my ink work, I kind of go back and forth. Sometimes I'm on a cold press. Sometimes I'm on a hot press boards. Sometimes on watercolor paper. Just, it, you know, just depends on. It, se it seems to me like sometimes the weather has something to do with it. The way the, oh, ink, yeah? the, way the ink is laying, you know. Oh, but, oh I'm, yeah, I'm a screen printer, so I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, sometimes I'm like, why isn't this working? You know, mm. like, you know, You're like this ink ain't right. Yeah, like why? What's going on with this? But so, yeah, um, Mark Riddick has a question for you. Um, Drew, do you prefer working in ink or, or color? Well, uh, I prefer. Here's one thing I do prefer: if I do something in ink, don't color it. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll color it. If you want to color, I'll color it, but don't color it. I think uh, that's a universal artist thing in the underground yeah, yeah. too. Yeah, but it's it's also universally not listened to a lot of times. Mm. Uh, but um yeah, right and right now I'm painting because like I like I said I feel like I've kind of I kind of like turned a corner. I think I'm doing okay. So like I I 
I've been painting a lot lately, but like this week, I did some ink stuff like that thing that I sent. Yeah, you. thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, I yeah. Was seeing the art with the show, I was like, oh wow, this is it brought <laughs> yeah. a different dimension for me. I'm like, yeah, yeah, exciting, so was, dude. You know? That was kind of it, that was kind of inspired, so that like uh, I kind of you know. Well, we talked about getting together and talking on here, and I wanted to devote an entire episode just towards your artwork because, in my you know humble opinion, these these records like they meant a lot to me, man. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were the Necrophagia one, all these comps, like you know me writing to the bands from the back and right, the Renaissance right. in general. Like this is fucking made like my, made me get into metal basically. Yeah, man. yeah. Yeah, and also along the lines of some of the same things you said, metal forces. Right. right. I was after the kick-ass monthly thing. You yeah, know, yeah. A little after that. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. more like Ed Farshley's first scene, you know. Yeah, yeah. I got you. So got yeah, you. that's where I kind of come into the zone, you know. Or yeah, you know, yeah. like you know, Kerrang, Metal Force. Metal forces had that pen bangers. Right. So you right. could look through there for people's addresses. And yes. Yes. You yes. see all the names of the bands and say like. Like, who are these bands, you know? Right, right. Which it well, was, like I you said, know. you know, we're, we were talking earlier about being in the right place at the right time. But like I said, when I came back to the East Coast, and then, uh, like, the death metal scene was really starting to come together. Right so on. That, that's probably, that's about the era you come in, right? So it's like Pretty 80... Much. 88 right well like, i came i like thrash you know and like eight you know i'm i'm 52 so i like thrash when i was like you know 14 13 14 so you know i'm coming off heavy metal you know yeah yeah of course acdc kiss led zeppelin yeah so uh, then thrash kind of hit i had heard like some thrash on the radio you know heavy metal from right. hell on on Z, uh, k-rock yeah but something. like i guess what i'm coming at like the first time it was really a scene. Oh yeah, a scene. You, you know what I mean? Like, well, like, the first like times I, I felt it was a scene was like that Napalm Death show at Streets, and then yeah. G Willikers right after yep. that. Yep, 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 exactly, exactly. And I, I the Ex Mortis guys took me to that Streets show. Right. And well, I bought. Then that's yeah, awesome. Napalm. You want to know something? That's pretty awesome because outside yeah, yeah. of that Streets show. I bought two Ex Mortis demos from the guy from his car. Nice, nice. Yeah, and I looked at the nice, covers nice. too, and awesome. I was like, "Damn, did you do their logo too?" Or <laughs> I did, I did. Yes, I did both of the. I did both of the covers, the whole things. Right. Yeah, yeah. So this would be like their first thing you did for them, maybe the Descent into yeah, Chaos, yeah, yeah. and you did that logo yep. and the artwork. Yep. Yep. And then also the. Um, and immortality's, immortality's end. end cover. So yeah, yeah I yeah. bought these I in like the parking lot at the Napalm show. Yeah. And I was very excited. I, I, I was I, like, I, oh I, yeah, I, I got thought, demos. I, th I thought the new logo. It's in my mind the new logo was on that one, but I guess it isn't. Yeah. Because I did that other logo for them. I know. I'm, I guess not. Like the, because I remember like Brian complaining about the, that logo. On the first one, I thought I did another one. Okay, whatever. I thought it was maybe, on there. Maybe down the line. Yeah, yeah, a, yeah. A, a 1989 on it for the. Uh, yeah, like I said, I was for, back. I was back here. Yeah. So that was really that was really lucky. You know, like I said, that that was lucky too because you know, like, like I said, like, I mean, to me, like when I was in LA, punk was the thing that was happening. It wasn't like I didn't go to a lot of metal shows out there. I mean, I went right. to Motorhead and Venom, Celt Frost. I guess I kind of did go to a lot of metal shows, uh, you know, <laughs> Vo Voivod and Exodus and stuff like that. But, you know, there was a lot of punk shows, you know, going to. And I did a lot of stuff for like punk zines. And um, that was kind of my. And, you know, when we I, talked I, about G Willikers on when you came on my G Willikers episode, you had yeah. mentioned offhand that um, the punk shows in LA back in the early 90s were like very violent. Yeah, yeah, they were rough. They were, yeah, they were rough. What so, was, not, was it not, like a not, punks not, versus skins? Was it like, no, uh, no, it was just like long hairs was, versus New York there, kind of thing? No, no, there was just was always like a group of troublemakers at okay. every show, it seemed like, you know. 
Santa Monica was the worst. Santa Monica, I guess it's Civic, Santa Monica Civic. Santa Monica Civic Center, I where went Black to, Flag would the, play back in the day. I went to Venom there, and I went to Motorhead there. And they were both, like, not fun. And I was a little guy. You know, I'm a little guy, you know what I mean? I was, like, I was not... And, like, my, my friends were, like, total nerdy dudes, like, and me too, you know? And you so, guys yeah, would just kind of stand back and watch the violence like I would? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, like, but the thing is funny, like, because when you come from a heavy metal background, you, you know, you want to be up front and, like, bang your head and stuff. That's where I was as a kid. I remember, like, seeing, like, Motorhead and, and Merciful Fate at the tower, you know, like, Exciter and just being like, this is, like, the greatest, you know? Hmm. And then, like... When that other stuff happened, that the mosh thing, I mean, everybody loves it now, but like to me, that was like, what is happening? This is such a bummer. Like, oh. I don't like this at all. I'm like, fuck, man, I'm going back to my seat, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at the, you know, so, I mean, would you say, where, where would you, where did you kind of find your first metal shows out in LA or do you, anything in Pennsylvania before you left? Well, I mean, like, you know, like back in, the, you know, like, I mean, I graduated high school in, in 1982, you know what oh, I mean? Okay. So there was like, when you went to shows then, it was the spectrum. You went to big right. shows. Yeah, it was it, a arena. Was, there, yeah, there was no, bar, I, I, I never know about bar shows until I went to LA and went to punk shows. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, I, I didn't, it, it's funny to me, like, when I talk to, like, my friend Jim, like, who's from the Chicago area, and him talking about being like 14 and going to see like autopsy and like you're just like oh, it must have been like just fucking mind blowing like to yeah. be a young kid and seeing that you know but i think it's also funny cuz i call that like i call like that age group it's like slayer brain like they can't even it's a rare bird that can even hear rock and roll music once you once you're infected with that stuff at <laughs> such a young age you're yeah. like I mean, you got yeah. You've grown up different when you. Yeah, you yeah. Know, you yeah. started on an autopsy. <laughs> yes, you do. Even when you started on a Slayer in a weird way, like, yeah, you kind of grew up a little different. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely like, like I said, you can't. I gotta go like, can you even hear Led Zeppelin? Like, yeah, like, yeah. You know, know what's going on. Or Deep and it's like or it something. takes people a long time to get come around. Or Black talk, Sabbath. Right, I've talked that like like. uh I think we talked about that on the G Willikers thing. You know, I remember meeting all, like all the guys at your age, like, you know, Alex Books and all those guys. And, you know, everybody was very hardcore. Like they were really like turning the page. Like, right. you know, Met Metallica was just out. Like Slayer even was like. Even we were done with them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I always yeah. remember like that Napalm Death thing where it was mixed like too slow, Dave. Sorry. You know, like, yeah. Um, you know, and then, you know, and now, of course, you know, all those same people listen to Angel Witch and, you know, like, yeah, yeah. And stuff, so for you, great. though, when you came back to Pennsylvania and then you said that you would go to Rock and Roll Plus, I believe. And yeah, yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, then yeah. that's the first time you maybe found out about, like, say, shows at G. Willikers and stuff. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Like, Annie was really important. You know, she that store was really important. I think I got, I think I got the incantation demo from that store, you know, and um, cool. I, I remember I got the I got the the winter. Well, actually, I talked my friend into getting the winter, right. so I could tape it from him. So you could tape it from. Him. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, this that. I'll get good. this, and you get yeah, that. You get that. <laughs> Still one of my favorite records. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, that was a, that was room, and I think I think she's the one that got me in contact with Gorophobia. Okay. Yeah, I think she made that connection, and cool. um, and you know, of course, like I said, all those all those kids were thrilled to meet the necrophagia dude. You know, right, and, right. You know, what I mean? and then you well, lived I, locally too, in a way. So. Yeah, yeah, and I was really happy to do it. Like I did the you know the Gorophobia cover. Yeah, that's the uh, second seven inch. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, the yeah. First, but you did this seven inch first, the Morbidious yep, Pathology. Yep, yep. Yeah, I love that one. That's like that's, like I said, like you know, th these are the, all the like the Speed Metal Hells, the Indestroy, that Hellion cover, 
that agoraphobia. You got certain favorites? That's like, well, like that's, that's my vibe. You know what I mean? And when I, when I like try to step out of it and just try to like, I don't know what you call it, but like just trying to do something different for the, like I said, like I said earlier, for the band's sake, I was like, oh, they really does not want the same exact Well, this, thing. I mean, this one, you stepped out a little bit, you know? Just a yeah, little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, that was a, that was a little different. That was a little different. This I was cool, though. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it. I thought it was cool. It worked out. It fits with the title of the album. The, the yeah, 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 yeah. And then yeah. I guess around the same time, too, um, we didn't show this 7-inch, uh, Joe Pupo's uh, label. Yes. The Ex Mortis, uh, Fade yes. from Reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not too bad. It's not right. And then, no, I didn't pull that bigger version down. No, here it is. Is this it? Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. Um, this was another piece that you did. Like, it's... um. You know, were you guided on any of these things, or people were just like kind of just just no, they drew, draw no, me something? No, no, no. Okay. I mean, and I, that's the way. I mean, like even now, like I think like the best the, the way I like to do it is like, you know, I have an Instagram. You know, I you know I don't go on Facebook that much. I use Facebook Messenger, but I just right. Facebook is just like whatever. Um, but like you know, if somebody wants me to do something. Usually I say, all right, look at the Instagram page and tell me something that you want it to be like, mm, Right. you know, like, like, oh, in this, so I, have so I'm idea. not because wrong as an art buyer. So I'm not wrong as an art buyer. When I do that and ask a band, I'm like, yo, can you do something? No, because like the worst thing, because the worst thing you could do, worst thing you could do is say like, Hey, do could, anything. You do, could you do this, do something like this guy and i'm like well call that guy mm, right. <laughs> don't ask me to do it you know right. like you know like so like you know like i'm like this is what i do you know and i'm i'm only i'm willing to work with people it's like oh i want like this but you know whatever you, you understand the concept you know yeah. it's pretty 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 straightforward you know Definitely, dude. but if people have like an idea that they want something like you know like i can't like you know like I said name an artist you know, like no, that I don't want to do yeah, that. Yeah, you figure like yeah, like go yeah, just, that artist, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But, but yeah, they tell, I, they, I, so they tell I, they it's, like... it's kind of nice to hear from an artist's mouth that to say like it's okay for me to look at their other artwork and use it as a little piece, a comparison piece to say, you know, can you do something like this? So yeah, that, yeah, that kind of makes like, me feel a little better, actually. And also, like, like as we said before, like because. I have a lot of different, there's a few different styles. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like, I mean, God forbid if somebody saw Savage Steel and they're like, oh, I, I want something like that. You know, I'd be like, are you sure? <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> but, but, you know, but, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know what they saw. I don't know what they like. Right. You know what I mean? Or they might not be that familiar with me at all. So it's like, you know. So that's the way I like to do it now. For you nowadays, just, you know, this would be something I'd probably ask towards the end, but for you nowadays, since we're on topic, would you check out the band before you did the art or? I think most, I kind of, I kind of want to do stuff for people that are de half decent. I gotcha. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, like I said, back, like, like, I don't do this for a living, you know? bless you if you do it for a living good for you you know but i don't do it for a living so like i just i can say no i don't pay any bills with it right and you know so it's just like yeah i and usually what happens is like the, the people who are asking me to do stuff now are people like i know or you know like 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 if blood feast asked me to do something now i, I just kind of have to say yes <laughs> And, and, and I don't mean that. I mean that like I don't want anybody else drawing my. Dude, I got you because you, know you know put I mean? a signature yeah. on them in a way. Yeah, even though I don't every even though every cover is not that great, you know, like I still don't want anybody else doing it. You know, right. they might do it better than me. I don't want that. I don't want that. <laughs> There's a question, yeah. Roy. Ask about art, skateboard art. You ever do any skateboard art? I've never done any skateboard art. Uh, I've I've never been involved in that scene. Right. 
So I never really pursued it, but uh, I could see I could see you on but it there. Would work, I could, you know, I, I'm sure I could do it. It would work, you know. If I a lot of people were talking about this today, said pestilence were putting out consuming impulse with AI art. There was a lot of stuff with that today. Yeah. Oh, the, oh, what they, oh, they, oh, they, that new they cover. Put out some kind of AI, AI art for their new cover. It's, it's, it's a mess. It's a mess. Like that, like I saw that ad that uh, I think, I think Season of Mist had it up because they, it was in their shop. They had like the Carry King and the Deicide. Oh, yeah, that thing. Back to back. And I'm like, this looks like the same shit. Like, it's like, it's unbelievable. Like, I mean, that was weird, especially I mean, for somebody funny, like, as established as a Kerry King. To yeah, be, you they know, can't like the dime and like no know, offense to D aside, but like they're both established. But like as somebody as established as Kerry King, like you're using this as your art, dude. It's crazy. And, and also the video that goes with that. I just, <laughs> it's like so laughably like thrown together. It's kind of scary. I'm like, dude, this I is mean, the guy from Slayer. Like, I guess, like, you know, the only hope that you can have is that we've been here before. Like, mm. you remember when, like, Photoshop happened, right? Right. And we got the Monstrosity Egg record cover. Okay? Like, th that was pretty cringy. And then, for a long time, we got the Gamer Art record covers. Right. Which, you know, are technically, I guess, but they have no it's not heavy metal it just doesn't do it for me i don't i don't see it you know what i mean yeah and i think ai is maybe hopefully it's going to be the same We're, but it's crazy that like like you said like big bands who have cash yeah <laughs> it's like crazy it's like i know that it blows my mind dude that's the, the most that's the most blow mind-blowing part of it all it's like yeah. this band this is the guy from slayer man it's one of the biggest thrash bands there is. They probably just did a multi-million dollar tour when they did their last tour. Right. And so, like, how could they not have money? You know what? I predicted that and Curry also, King but, thing, too. You know, also, Name and all. Because he said, like... He, what we were saying about, like, Joy. Like, you know, it's like, that guy had a vision of what he wanted. Right. I don't know if Kerry King has a vision of, like, of, you know, he's probably just somebody just... Hey, we can do that. You know, he's like, fine. I did the record. Like, you know, you do that. So I don't know how involved those guys were. They don't. Yeah. On the records anyway. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't know. We had but, another good question here. Um, Mark Riddick asks, any really bad commission experiences? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's too many. Uh, um. Well, see, see, this is the thing. Is like, like I said, I, I'm I, especially now in, in like the last thirty years, right? Right. I I have a job. I don't, you know, I, I don't need the money, and thank goodness for like my art. So, like I said, I just I'm very handshaky. Like you know, like you want. And I've had I've had experience. You know, people sometimes people don't like stuff, and I'm totally fine with that. You know, yeah. what I'm not what I'm not fine with is like, okay, like, is is it this is this deadline crucial? Like, I could do something, I could fix this up or do something else. You know, like, right. but you know, sometimes you get ghosted, and it's like, okay, fine. You know, what what are you gonna do? Like, I don't. Yeah, yeah, understand. I mean, I've had I've had a band that's pretty famous, pretty big, like in this very room telling me, we really want you to do this. Take your time, blah, blah, blah. And then like a month later, the record came out, mm. <laughs> you know? And it's like, okay. I mean, you know, but like there was, I was just like doing this. I was at the sketching stage basically, you know, right, but it was right. like, so much for like you know like we really want you to do this kind of but you know yeah. like, I mean, like they're they don't answer i mean like you said when bands get to a certain level they're not answering for themselves anymore they're being right told on. this record got to come out you know this guy can crank this out let's just whatever you know like 
and they just do it. Which is kind of sad, because you really want your artistic vision of your music and your cover to go together, you know? I noticed too many bands, they record their record, or they record their recording, let's call it, and then they want to, they care about the art afterwards, which is not the time they care about. Well, I mean, like I said, it's just the... Beforehand. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's just, it's just, I I just think that really comes with territory. When you get to a certain level, you know, your life is not totally your own anymore. Right. You know what I mean? So... I don't know. It's like, yeah. I mean, the more cooks in the kitchen, the kitchen gets yeah, yeah, crowded. Yeah. yeah, right, right. Bottom and line, right. I, in I all businesses, gets... all walks of life, basically, everything you do, the more cooks in the kitchen, the more crowded it gets, and the, the more ideas yeah, are thrown one, in there. Confusion. I remember, I remember another time that uh, another like kind of biggish band was, uh, and a band I really liked. They asked me to do some artwork. And I was working on it, and the same kind of thing happened. And like you know, it just kind of. And then like I was hanging out with them, and uh, and I think it was Dennis Dredd was doing a talk, and he said like, he goes, "Oh yeah, you know." And sometimes bands will like, uh, they'll like ask you to do something, and then they ghost you. And I, the guy was sitting right next to me. He goes, "I know, I hate when that happens." He oh, just, man. He, he just had to laugh. <laughs> You're like, you did that to me. Yeah, you totally did that to me. <laughs> You're like, I've been holding this in for fucking three years. <laughs> but, but you know, we're we're kind of, we're we're still we're friend we're very friendly. You know, like, I'm yeah, you know, big fan of him and the band he's in. So, well, you didn't all, name his name, good. so obviously all, you're good. It's all good. It's all good. With um with some of the other stuff too, you did um this you had this was a. Uh, Ex-, Ex Mortis release that I put out actually. Wait, yeah, I yeah, have a yeah. Better version of this. Hold on a sec. Yeah, I, I, have... I think this was a draft release actually. This is this yeah, is the, have... a draft of it, so it was the other direction. Yeah, I have this right here. Yeah, that was the original original. Yeah, this is the original. Man, that's a nice piece. Yeah, thank you. I got ghosted by them afterwards after I put the release out. Yeah. I think... <laughs> Yeah, they, 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 same thing like for a while like brian put up like a band camp page and he had like he was selling cds of the first two and he, i was like hey you're gonna give me some of these like you know and like a shirt and i never got any of that stuff yeah he goes yeah. to me too for a weird reason the um with other with other through the years too beyond like you did like multiple gorephobia arts yeah. So like, and I there was one too I didn't show here. This necrophagia. Oh yeah, the ad. Yeah, like an ad for just the magazine. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was always fun. I always was impressed by this art piece. Yeah, I like that one. I I did I did a uh, an updated version of that. I put it on a little poster. Let's talk about updated version since you mentioned it offhand, brother. Um, you were redrew and were redrawing the Satan's Revenge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, what were you doing? Yeah. Taking like kind of a, took the old version of it and just like redrew an almost yeah, exact, yeah. but maybe it's bigger. It's like the, a it's different like the canvas. third. It's like the third version of it. Because I mean, the thing it's is, I like, close. Because the <laughs> thing is, I don't have I don't have that record and I don't mm. have that art. So I basically like Xeroxed it and blew it up and then traced it and like kind of redid it. And I tell you what, it's hard to draw like you did when you were young because things are wrong long and you're like you want to fix them but you're like you don't uh, want to fix them too much, so it doesn't gotcha. look like it anymore so i was i just i just like like that piece i don't know i just keep going back to it's it it's a nice one i did the same i did the same thing with uh let's see have it keep something. so everybody in death metal podcast chat i appreciate you guys too um this is an awesome episode drew sh- drew's bringing out all the artillery this is like uh that predator cover was like a redone version of it right because because i always kind of like that cover. i like that concept but i never really like that painting that much hmm. so yeah that's cool and the thing about that cover was again another funny thing with ann is is that this she one? she said phantom yeah 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 she said, we got this thing coming up 
called War God. We might do this War God record. So I was like, all right. So I went home and I did that painting. And then that War God record fell through and she just used it for the Phantom. Oh, wow. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty funny. Yeah, so new I, Renaissance I, I, sound. It's funny to hear like how these bands felt about some of this stuff. They're probably like, "What the fuck? Like, what? What, what is this?" Yeah, and then I mean, the new Renaissance stuff though, like it got a lot of. It felt like it got a lot of traction, which is kind of cool, you know. Yeah, but yeah. I think it had bad distribution. You said that maybe something was bad in the mix. I think they just had bad distribution. Basically, that was bottom line, you know. Yeah, my, yeah. my opinion. I mean, I think, I think, like, I think the comps. I think the comps are like exceptional, but I I think a lot of the record output is not. Right. That's my interpretation. I don't know. No, Do you that, agree with that? No, that, I, mean, I agree some, with that you, too. You know, necrophagia is good. Blood feast is good. Post mortem's good. But you know, I don't like. There's not a lot of other records that I go back to and think are are great records. I, but you know, on, honestly, I didn't really listen to a lot of those records that much right. either. Because, like I said, I was kind of like into punk rock a lot, so a lot of stuff sounded corny to me, you know. Right. You know, so I was like, yeah, I was like, eh. like if it didn't like just kick ass from like Needle Drop, right? I was just like, yeah, okay. Well, I, I, that's I, where I'm at with all my music now. If it doesn't yeah, kick like, my ass right from the Needle I, Drop, it, forget it. Yeah, yeah. I don't have an. I didn't have enough time to like, you know, sit there and like. It wasn't like when I was a kid. You know, when you bought a record when you're a kid and you're like. You rooted for that fucking thing. Right. Because you're like, this is my record for the summer. You're like, I can't wait until this record comes out after two Megatherion. And then exactly. you get then you got into the pandemonium. You're like, oh. <laughs> and then you're like, well, I can't wait till into, after Into the Pandemonium. The fucking yeah, next yeah. record is going to be amazing, dude. Exactly. exactly. I ordered that shit. I saw that at the record store guy. Had the Cold Lake. I was like, oh, no. no. He's like, you made me special order this. <laughs> ah, <laughs> I'm like, oh, man. I got to fucking buy it. Well, you that's know that, that, that that was my that was my teenage years as a Kiss fan. You know, like yeah, those later years, I was like, and it's like one of my pet peeves, like old heads like standing up for some of those records. I'm like, those records suck. Fuck that shit. <laughs> records suck. I remember bringing that shit home and listening to it and being like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Like shit. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, so in your in your world. You know, did you go from like a metal to a punk to like a grind to a death metal, a black metal kind of like thrash? I mean, thrash in there. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. I mean, I, I, I guess so. I mean, like, like I said, I think what, what, you know, when, when I went to art school and I met my crew of friends, Gordon is one of them, the guy who, my friend Scott and then another friend Ron, and we traded tapes with each other. And like, you know, so like the tape I got from Ron, he had Bloodlust on there from Venom, but that was my influence. He, like, I don't know if you remember, like the black metal record, one version had Bloodlust on it and one version did not have Bloodlust on it. And I had the version without Bloodlust on it. So he taped me that. And then the rest was like Black Flag and the Subhumans and Bauhaus, the Cramps. So like my world just kind of opened up, you know? Right. And and I just think like the way I look at music now is like I always, I even look at heavy metal like through that lens of like a punk rock aesthetic like how creative are they how unique are they how interesting is this you know what I mean like yeah. I don't you know I mean you no know, no everybody doesn't like generic things but like whatever I just think it's like I, I'm just a little bit more cynical when i look at certain things i go like yeah i know what you i see what you're doing here it's gordon like... has a question or drew and <laughs> i did a fanzine together yes. two issues ask him if he has those to show those were awesome i you know what i didn't pull those out i don't know where they are i i have one i have one issue i have the first issue cool, that we man. did together and that was really fun and then and then like uh and then like the next one was supposed to have an interview with Martin Ain on it, but uh-huh. I never, 
I never transcribed that interview and put that thing out. Like a phone call where you had to like type yeah, it all yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, it was like a phone call. Like like my girlfriend at the time, like like we went to the show and you know, cute girl. Of course, they're talking to her, and you know, like we got their number and then like called them, kind of interview. So it would have been like a most the most uninteresting interview in the world sort of but like right. you know the reason i the reason we started that zine is because when i lived in pennsylvania i was going to start a zine and i wrote to venom and i sent okay. venom an interview so then when i lived in california my mom called me and says you got this letter from england and i and i totally did i was like what the fuck is that like i just forgot about it and then when I got it, it was the Venom interview. Oh, wow. So I was like, "All right, we got to do this now. Now we got to do it." So we just did it, and it was oh, cool. it was really more, like I said again, it was really more punk rock than metal. But what was the uh, name of the zine? It was called Pump and Slush. Okay, yeah, I saw that in my my uh, in your inter- in, yeah my pre-interview look around. Yeah, yeah, cool, man. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, we did too. Was that thing more like? Uh, did that have a v- diversity of styles in it too? The zine, like from it was, Venom it, it to was punk. A lot of, I mean, like a lot of the artwork was like pen and ink stuff, so it, it kind of looked like, like I said, that that Gorophobia ink, the 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 green one, right? Uh, you know, the Speed Metal Hell, the In Destroy. It had that kind of art style in it because it was a black and white thing. Oh yes, the Venom interview was hilarious, and I got, <laughs> and 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 then like, after um, after we did that zine, uh, Venom came to California and they did an in store, and um, we got a pic, we got a picture of uh, Cronus and Abaddon with the zine, and oh, that's, that's on cool. my, that's on my Instagram page too, and then like Very we cool. had like then like at one point we just had covers printed. Cause we didn't, it wasn't done yet. And one time I was at the metal blade office and I heard the secretary saying, Lars and James want to get into the mentors tonight. So I was like, <laughs> so I went home and I was like, Oh my God. I was like, Gordy, like fucking Hetfield and, and Ulrich are going to be at the mentors tonight. We got to go. We got to go. So we went, and sure enough, they were there. And then that's on my Instagram page too. Lars holding the zine Ooh. and a picture of el duce holding the zine too oh cool which is pretty, Very which cool. Is pretty cool yeah so that's if, if someone wants to go through my instagram page it's on there somewhere um and, but lars was very nice by the way nice. i know he has a bad rep but he was very nice james was very standoffish <laughs> which is fine you know what it would right yeah totally fine you know Interesting. I mean, like yeah. being in that scene too. Did you get to see other thrashers at like even the bigger shows or club shows? Were there other like people from like Exodus or like Testament, Violence, etc. That you knew? Of? No, not that. Not not that I knew at the time. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I'm sure there are certain people there that I wouldn't even know who they were at the time. You know what I Obviously. mean? Obviously. <clears throat> so, I mean, I saw Exodus with uh, Voivod and. Celtic Frost at Fender's Ballroom. That was, you know, cool. just kind of fucking. Amazing. No, that's, that's a that, classic. That's my shit right there. Like that's, that's a classic that's right there. Stuff, you know? We didn't talk about um, you drew or redrew Durkata's uh, logo. Yeah, I just did the. Lo- I just worked on the logo. Like a lot of people think I did that seven. It's, obviously, that's Chris Moyan. Yeah. 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 And I love- so, Sharon mentioned it on one of our shows or something. Or yeah, somewhere. yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Same with same thing with the the amorphous logo. Oh, that's what I was going to ask you. So you reworked that amorphous yeah, logo I re- too. I reworked the amorphous logo too. Oh, that's wild. So that 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 logo in particular, you mean? Yes, that's the logo from I the did. bubble one that was the original. Yeah, yeah. And then oh. like and then like the uh, the uh, classic the privilege dude. Of e- the privilege of evil cover is basically a read like a reinterpretation of Chris's drawing from the demo. Mm. And I don't even remember where I saw that Chris Moyen draw. It must've been in a zine or something. Maybe relapse gave it to me. I don't know. I don't remember. 
<clears throat> but it was just kind of like I didn't really come up with a new idea. I just basically said like, oh, this is kind of cool. I'll yeah, just, I'll just a do lot something. of people uh, that were um, in my feeds uh, were all um, hailing the uh, Privilege of Evil. Yeah, that's uh, a cover. That's a pretty fun one. I want to see. I for some reason it did not get loaded in here. So let me just reload <clears> this for one split second. And then I I had I, I wanted to ask about that logo because I I saw that you were connected with that um yes like your yes. name was somehow connected with that uh yeah with that with the amorphous logo, but it just didn't seem like it was like um it didn't seem like it was like a hundred percent you know like I wasn't like I didn't want to like I don't want to ask somebody about like things that they did not do you know right then, right uh, right so it, with the um, amorphous I, I did the same thing. I did the same thing with Gorephobia too. Right. Oh, you reworked their logo. As yeah, well. I reworked their logo too. So a lot there was a bunch of people speaking on this and saying that this was one of their favorites, actually. Oh cool. Yeah, I, I is, like it. Yeah, it's a killer one, man. It's yeah, a killer it's a, release too. Yeah, oh, hell yeah. It's great. Yeah, it's was, awesome. Do you I mean, have you, you know, like uh when say you've done like an amorphous or like yeah, I know you've been to Finland, I know you've been around, but like when you did their artwork, were you like in connection with them or you just worked with the label? Just relapse. Just, just relapse. relapse. Right. Yeah, yeah. Just this I I guess I, I only Matt was the only person I knew, you right. know, really. I, I don't even think I knew Sean at that point. I think I met Sean later. I don't remember when Sean joined. Pellet? Yeah, Pellet. I don't remember when he got involved, but I remember it was Matt mostly. And I don't even remember how we got connected. Right. I just re I just remember certain phone calls with Matt. I remember him bitching about necroticism. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I remember him playing we took a van I took a van trip with him and Bill and we listened to the Metallica Black album Advance on the record on oh uh, my when, it was the Advance. And I was like, I can't believe I'm listening to the fucking Metallica Advance, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, you know, it's funny. I've never listened to that whole album. I, I mean, I just listened to it on a trip, and I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, I, I it's just think kind of funny. I never listened to the whole thing. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, it's weird. In the car, I listened to it that day, but that was it. And I was kind of I mean, like, they, what they, the I fuck mean, is I, this? I mean, I, I absolutely loved them back in the day. Mm. I, I just loved them, but then it was like, ugh. So, you know, you, over time, too, there was this, we're going to talk about a couple more releases, too. Oh, yeah, the Sislac thing. Sislac. Yeah, that's my, that's my friends from, uh, when I lived in West Philly, just, like, local guys, uh, uh, Brian, Nothing, and Kate, uh, and Joe, and, um, yeah, they would just, they just played locally and stuff, and, you know, they asked me to do something, and I was like, sure, I'd love to do it, yeah. Yeah, and. Yeah. As time went on to obviously, um, you know, you and I worked together with this Gorophobia yeah, yeah, yeah. Arc yeah, cover the yeah, for the, the Bio Phobia. Beasts of Abomination. Yeah, that's okay. It's like, yeah, it's all right. When you redid it too, you redid for a, yeah, a it's vinyl okay. version. Yeah, it's all right too. You had drawn this for me too at some point. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's all right. It's like it's a good time. <laughs> You still, you still, you're more of a fan of this one now for you. That one's great. That one, I love that one. That one worked. That one the really twisted worked. body thing is definitely cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that worked. That worked. How do you feel yeah, about it, the contrast funny, between like, I don't color know. on your stuff versus black and white? No. Nope. What's that? How do you feel about the, the like? Say this is col like colored, you know, green, but well, the, a lot one of these are black and white. Yeah, that's fine. That's I I, I like the the one color is fine. Yeah. I, I don't mind that, you know. Has a like, lot of depth. Sis, that Sislac was um, that Sislac's on red. I think uh -huh. the the one I have is. And you were like redrawing that Sislac thing, right? Weren't you? Yeah, I've 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 messed around with this one too. I don't know. Sometimes I like when I got nothing to do, I like rework stuff because I'm trying to. It's when I do that, I'm just working on like, can I ink this better? Mm. Or, you know, or can I paint it? Like, I try to paint it, you know? Well, I saw that little setup you had. You had done, like, a recent thing, and, like, you set up, like, a little model, and you did, like, a Oh, oh yeah, 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 that yeah. That was yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. really I, cool. Yeah, that was the, uh, that's, 
That's next to me here. Thank you, John Verica. Yeah, you penned the inner liner notes for that thing. It was amazing. Yeah, I don't know if you could see that guy. That was this yeah. one. Was, yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah, this one, of, like, this one of my this one of my music Alexi and Ross. That's their band. They're 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 really good. They're like a kind of like a sludgy. I I I I always say they sound like Killdozer, but I don't know. They're not really huge Killdozer fans, but this is the closest okay. thing I can think of. Because it's like they have like it's like sludge, but the vocals are not extreme extreme. They're like it's more stoned than okay. I hate more. God, you know. So you uh, let's see here. We have um, you did this artwork, Fester. But yeah, yeah, that was Razorback. That was... Yeah, that was a pretty fun one. You seemed like you would fit in on his Razorback artist, even you know, with yeah, some of the stuff I, they did. Yeah, uh, the thing about that was, that's another weird thing where I can't remember who that was supposed to be for somebody else. Oh, okay. And I, I guess the band didn't like it, and I think, um, I think Eric Rott actually ended up doing the cover for them, and then. Uh, Razorback used it for that for that release, huh. which is I, I didn't care. That's fine. Yeah, That's fine. I mean it's cool to have it out there. Um, yeah, 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 it's fine. Uh, but that knock, that that one, Mysticum, you did this one. art here too. Yeah, I did that. Cool. You became a bit like a kind of a big fan of black metal too over time, right, Drew? Yeah, yeah. I, I noticed I, that. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't I don't know how you feel about that, but like. I mean, I'm a little bit older than you, but like that stuff just harkens back to the stuff that I liked in the beginning. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's all influenced by Frost, <clears throat> Bathory, Venom. So it's like, it's like, oh, you like, they like this stuff. I like that stuff. Okay. I like certain <clears> throat> throat> bands. Like, I'm more I, into the driving war metal style, but yeah, not, I mean, not too repetitive either. Like, so it has to, there's like a, like a, a fine line, you know? Yeah, I mean, like, you know, when people say black metal, I mean, if you're thinking, like, the symphonic stuff, that's not my deal. Yeah, it's not my deal either. But, like, you know, early, you know, early Dark, actually, new Dark Throne I like, too, you know. Um, Yeah, they were a little bit all over the place, but I still like their stuff, too. Yeah. I mean, I I like... Oh, uh, actually, speaking of Dark Throne, uh, Marcy said, uh, can you tell Drew that uh, Fenris has a picture of you and him, and he has his, his treasure or something? So just so you know, and to say hi. That's so right. she texted well, me yesterday, and she said, "Can you tell Drew that um, uh, Fenris has a picture of him and uh, him and Drew or something? It's one of his treasures." That's funny. Well, I I did it. I autographed a blood feast for Fenris. He asked me for my autograph. Mm. Uh, so cool. that was pretty. That was pretty cool. So yeah, Maybe that's I, what I, she was I, talking I, about. Yeah, I we we met him in Norway. That was he's he's a blast. He's the greatest. Cool. Yeah, I figured it. So thought, his it, name it, got it, mentioned. It, I had us mention that. And as a as a as a old dude, you know, an older guy, he's still the diehard metal guy. He's, yeah, he's great. Definitely, cryptic great. slaughter. He keeps it alive, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as I, far I, as, I listen, you know, I, I'm a patron for his uh, his Fenry's podcast oh the live yeah that's... yeah yeah it's great it's great you did our let's see here we got a couple more too uh blasphemous from Pennsylvania. oh yeah the blasphemous yeah that was including their cool. logo yeah I, I worked i i again i reworked their logo and then they reworked it again but i reworked it cool and then and i then did there was that. this too um blackmetal.com compilation oh yeah 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 that's yeah did that little pieces little parts bring you back in history a little bit you know well it was funny like when i i ordered something from blackmetal.com and they on my receipt they said is this the drew elliott Uh uh-huh and i you know that's how we we ended up working together that's cool yeah um this one i always like the color of this oh yeah the non-slaughter non-slaughter god sodomy uh yeah yeah god sodomy yeah. Oh, goat side of me, my bad. Yeah. yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. Here's one we didn't talk about actually from '89. You did this band's thing. Me. I saw. I just saw that on my metal archives. That's not me. 
That's not you. You didn't do the logo. It said you just did the logo. I don't think so. Okay. It's possible. Okay. I don't think so though. I don't I, remember. I don't yeah, remember. What... I mean, there's things I don't remember, like 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 uh, like John Verica. He 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 showed me some drawing, and he said, "He goes, oh, you drew this," and I said, "I don't remember that." And he goes, "You did." <laughs> And I'm like, I didn't say I didn't do it. <laughs> I do a lot of drawings. I was like, I just don't remember doing it. It, it looks like me. I could have. Because it was like it's... a little doodle on a letter, you know? Yeah. And uh, we got this piece. Uh, the oh, yeah, Necro yeah. Thrash comp. Yeah, yeah. It's like a seven inch or something? That's a seven inch, yeah. I think that's, I think Norwegian, I got that. Uh, Norwegian bands, maybe? Yeah, that's here. Nice. Necromantheon's on there. Toxic Death. Death Hammers on it. Good shit. Yeah, Necromantheon, yeah, man. Good stuff. They're good. Yeah. And then like, down the line, too. Uh, he's got his obliteration shirt. Yeah. So down the line, too. Um, the, which I this I'm pretty an, intrigued by this cover because it, it's it really brings out a lot of your style. And then on top of it, you know, this band got pretty well known. Oh, Midnight. Yeah, yeah. Midnight. Yeah. yeah. So this is from 2019. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really cool, man. It's a, I love that, the nuns and uh, just yeah, it has a I lot mean, of like, character. I, I see this is like right before. It's kind of funny. I did two painting jobs that were pretty big. I did that one and I did the necrophagia uh, compilation. Uh -huh. Which I, you know, where I reworked the original artwork. Right. Chain and put Killjoy in it. Oh, I didn't even have that one in this uh, collage. But yeah. yeah. And I put 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 the Wendy Wendy O in it because he's a oh, big. Oh shit! Artist. Yeah, he loved Wendy O. Yeah. And uh, they're like, I turned I turned one of the guys into Coffin Joe. Oh shit! Yeah, he loved Coffin Joe too, man. That's an homage and an homage and an homage. And and <laughs> oh, and Euronymous. And Phil and Selmo's in there. Okay. <laughs> Over here. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> sick. Pretty sick, <laughs> bro. Pretty awesome, dude. I was gonna. Say, I I th yeah. I don't know if I had seen that one. I saw this one though. Yeah, that was that was that one I really liked. Okay, so anyway, so so here's the thing, so so those the midnight one and that necrophagia one, was, you know, like I was just not that necrophagia one, the other one that oh, you don't have. One. Um, like I was, I turned the painting corner after those two. You know what I mean? Like they're okay. They're not. They're not great, but they're okay. But the, then the, the, the coloring is amazing on these. But the things, necrophagia dude. you showed, that's when I was kind of like, oh, now I'm starting to cook with gas a little bit. You know what I mean? Like the, now it's starting to work. It's it's getting there. And um, the the blood feast that's coming out next, that one's pretty good. That's a good painting. Hmm. That's Let's a good see one. If we got something here. Yeah, you yeah. Did this too though from Blood Feast? Yeah, Chopped, man. This one, this, this one, this one kind of pissed me off because <laughs> because <laughs> this was my fault. I should have cropped this. I mm. was really just practicing and fucking around painting those clouds. Okay. And and it was supposed to be a picture disc. Oh, okay. Okay. So, I don't know if you, like on my page you'll see like the way I pictured it as a picture disc. It was like a circle around the guy with the little axe like poking out. You know? And like that's gotcha. the way it was supposed to be. I had no idea that they weren't going to that they were going to just print it up regular. And then I gotcha. not crop it, you know? And if you look on my page, I also have it cropped the way I would you have. have do you find that to be an artist's nightmare? <laughs> and you and other well, artists, well, where you know, your you art is just interpreted just a little roughly? Well, 
I mean, you know, it, I can't fault them for it. I, that was my fault. I should have I should have just cropped it the way I wanted it. You know what I mean? Sometimes I have a little leeway because sometimes people use pieces for the back or, right. you know what I mean? So it's like they do. And sometimes they give them a little extra, but I, I really, that was my fault. I shouldn't have done that. I should have like be the it. newer um, Blood Feast right here. Yeah, that one. I, that one's not bad. Again, the future that, state of wicked. Of again, that's right before like painting got right. You know, it's like me still struggling with it, but it's it's okay. It's all right. You know, it's okay. But so uh, when you say painting gone right, are you saying stuff like this from two thousand like twenty four? Yeah, this really is better. Yeah, yeah. Like your... it's it's all about co mixing the colors right. Right. And being able to shade. Like, I, you know, like, I, I just did not get it at that or earlier. Or something like this, maybe? No, well, that's just a marker drawing. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what, <laughs> you, that's just so you, you're very diverse, obviously. You can yeah, draw that's with just, the pen. That's just me fucking around in the sketchbook, you know what I mean? That's just like, you know. Gotcha. I saw you did an artwork, too, for Sun. Oh, yeah, for Sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, sick. I mean, it's, I, and obviously you're a fan of the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, they're like, and also they're like, of all the bands that I know, I got, they're probably my favorite dudes. Like, they're just the funnest, nicest guys. Yeah, since, this is, death, really yeah, since very, this is Death Metal Podcast, too, let's talk about Death Metal a little bit. Like, yeah. what, what are, like, what are your favorites? Like, what, what's your, like, what's your, what's your been, like, What's your like early favorites to now? Not not everything, but I mean, I mean, what do you find yourself in, listening to the most? I mean, like back in those days, Symphony of the Sickness ruled my life for like two years. I think. <laughs> right. I just I was just uh, fucking obsessed with that record. I just could not believe it, and uh, and it's one of those things like you know people say, oh, it's. You know, new people are now saying, like, well, they try to call it, it's a grindcore record. It's like, okay, sure. It's like, you know, if that record isn't about death, I don't know what record is. <laughs> like, you know, but, you know, I mean, and obviously, you know, like the, the, the obvious ones, like the uh, Left Hand Path is one of my favorite records. You know, I actually, now I like Clandestine better. It's like my real favorite. Uh I wish LG was on it, but Tight record, yeah. But it's great record, you know. Uh, you know, obviously, Morbid Angel, that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm trying to think, I, I hate when this happens. Because... Yeah, take it towards the future now, though. What would you say in the last couple of years have been your thing? Oh, let's see. I know you're a Watain fan. Yeah, I'm a big Watain fan. I mean. They're like, they're, you so know. Mis they're so misunderstood. Yeah, they're great. Um, Wait, I, I, here's I, something I, we can come off topic for a second. Uh, Amy Rezepia, <laughs> Drew's older cousin and I <laughs> remember thinking how cool he was when we were younger. Always admired your talent. Oh, that's nice. That's we nice. love that. That's nice. Yeah. Does anyone have any uh, questions for Drew, maybe, in the chat? Like, uh, thank you, Mark Riddick, too, for your questions, man. Yeah, awesome, Mark. Dude. That's and really your awesome. art's awesome, too. Yeah. He's, Anybody he's have uh, questions for Drew that maybe we didn't cover here? I think we covered most of your albums, right? I think so. Quite a bit of art here. You got quite a bit of history underneath you, man. Yeah. yeah well, it's that's what being old is, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well and that's that's what this show is for too so right, like right. basically i want to you know like i want i want to try to get on here and talk to people about like what they've done and show yeah, yeah. and kind of show you yeah, know no, it's, it, it, you know it's, it's it's cool to meet people that hung in there you know what i mean that are still you know what's cool i thought about this before we went on me and you were at those G. Williker shows, like Carcass, and I didn't know you. I never met you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So course. I was at that Carcass show, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was that only was... later, later, later that uh, somebody like Alex was like, hey, uh, Drew Elliott, you know, what if we get Drew Elliott to do the cover for the CD we're going to put out, you know? 
yeah 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 that's awesome so yeah it's like we were in the same room dude you know yeah yeah absolutely absolutely yeah you were friends with killjoy if you got any cool stories i you know i mean like i i, I was friends with killjoy but like you know like we only were in the same room like a couple times like when he went to la we hung out mm -hmm. and then um i met him again in um philadelphia he was going to see electric wizard and he was at he was somebody told me oh killjoy is here huh. and um so we saw each other then and um, you know we talk on the phone you know like uh stuff like that uh, I, I don't know about cool stories but like you know he, he is a great guy interesting person you know like it's it's nice that like he's finally getting the credit that he's due because Definitely. I don't know about you, but I feel like there was a desert time in there where people just didn't really think about Necrophagia that much. There was, or they just focused on the first record and none of the other ones, which yeah. uh, by the time Helicoil Sto Della Morte came out, I thought it was fucking amazing, just to be honest. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I thought Phil's stuff was, I, I was like, wow, he plays it kind of like the old shit, you know? Yeah, I mean, and, my, um, my, my recollection was that, like, and of course, maybe, I mean, could debate like how deep i was into the scene like you know my but like yeah i think said i people did not really talk about that even season of the dead people right you know, like people like alex and john mcatee that of course they they talk about it you know Definitely. they love that stuff but you know like just guys at shows i mean you know like seeing a necrophagia shirt was like special you know yeah. You know what I mean? Rare. Like, yeah, it was a little rarity, but like now it seems like people are like, and especially when you go back and you listen to like how like um the atmosphere of a season of the dead is. Yeah, you know? yeah. When yeah. you listen it's, to it as a, a whole, a there's so much record. atmosphere to the record. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's. I mean, what else was like that record in '86? I don't know. Nothing, and the same no. with the even the demos vocally everything. Yeah, yeah. Drew. So, Here's a question from John Verica. Drew, did you live in L.A. for college? No, no. I just, like I said, I, I worked at a car wash in Aston, Pennsylvania, saved up $2,000, bought a plane ticket, and moved there with my friend. Nice. Lied, told the, guy, told the people we had jobs, uh, got a house, and just... Just went, winged it. just went from there. Just you went. You did the American dream of like a like an actor, basically. Yeah, yeah. Just the artist version. Yeah, I That's mean, cool. you know, I mean, we can debate on how well it turned out, but it was, <laughs> it was cool. It was good. You know, it's like I said, you hang in there, and like, it, it's. I, I like. I'm always really happy and appreciative that anybody cares about this stuff at all i think it's it's nice you know what i mean yeah. it, i i like i said i hung in there for a, i've been doing this for a long long time you know and uh yeah i like doing it you know so and i, I you, inquiring here about commissions so you probably should hit up his instagram man so check yeah. out his instagram and connect you know yeah 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 Okay, Gordon has something. Drew, tell him about the Halloween <laughs> tape we made for our big party. <laughs> oh Drew, this God. is why we make these episodes, too. So sisters and cousins and brothers and weird friends come out of the woodwork to ask these questions. <laughs> I, I, I haven't workshopped this story, but I've told it a bunch of times. I mean, like, this is a story about, like, how, like, when I was in school with Gordon how fucking nerdy and clueless we were okay so these people were having a ho gonna have a halloween party right i mean you know i'm going to art school with people that are like 19 20 you know everybody's not weird okay but our little cabal of friends were like oh we're gonna make this halloween tape that's gonna be really cool with uh -huh. weird scary music on it so like Triumph of Death was on it, like Bauhaus was on it, like uh, uh, I can't remember the other. There was just a lot. It was just like a, it was a mess 
of uh-huh. noise, you know? And I remember like we go to the party and of course we force them, sort of like convince them to put this tape on. Automatic room clear. <laughs> <laughs> everybody is crushed into like the kitchen while me and my two other dorky friends are sitting there going like isn't this great we're listening to <laughs> butthole surfers on halloween like it's awesome like yeah nobody thought so like you know you really you don't like you don't realize when you're in your own head like that you don't realize oh girls want to listen to ma- music that they dance to and they have a it's called party. Right, they want, like the a monster party? mash. Yeah, like yeah. the monster mash or something. Yeah, it's a yeah. Halloween party. Yeah, it's called a party, you know. Like they want to hear whatever. Madonna I understand or... because at my house on Halloween, I would point the speakers outside the window on the basement, and I would play like um like Dario Argento like horror soundtrack music, but I would it would scare little kids away actually. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I used that, to do, like, used I used to do that on Halloween. The fucking brick. Yeah, yeah. I used to do that when I was really young. I would play like you know, like Kiss records and stuff. Listen to God of Thunder a million times. Like yeah. every time kids came up and scared yeah, them. Yeah, my away. kids were like, "Yo, whatever you're playing is a little inappropriate." <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> my kids were telling me that. I was like, "Oh," I was like, "I'll turn it down." I was like, "It's the smoke machine scaring them, not me." Right, they're right. like, no, the music is a little spooky, it's man. Just... It's like kids are, they don't even want to get candy. I'm like, well, that's good. <laughs> a big part of my life, your art and those albums, good metal memories. Definitely, dude. And Thank that's, you. yeah, Thank man. You. And that's exactly why we had Drew on. And that's why I even talked to you about being on because the, the records that, you know, these are like memories for us. We, yeah, yeah. we went into the record store and we had to choose these records from the covers, Drew. Right, right. Just right. like you said earlier. So seeing a necrophagia or a blood feast or something, like we had to be like, oh man, you know, seeing this, you know, well, it, yeah, was, yeah. it was the compilation aspect of this that really bought me. Yeah. I yeah, was yeah. really into the compilations because I wanted to get the most for my money, you know? Did you, did you, you have any idea who any of those bands were? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had no idea who anyone was. It was just right, either right. the price or the amount of stuff that right. i could get and it's the same reason why i had gotten into demos because i was i was primarily a person who would buy tapes when they bought t- uh, stuff so is that, is, is that morbid angel track is that i i don't remember i don't remember this one's the, from the uh demo from the the kingdom come demo okay it's the okay, song okay, by kingdom okay. come and then it has their address okay. here for north carolina That's when amazing. wayne hartzell was the drummer Oh yeah, okay, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I was no, looking I had no idea. Today, like, actually, yeah, just... It was this record. This record I got later in life. I'll be very honest. But this yeah, record yeah. I got er- earlier. So this right, was right. like kind of a mind blower for me. Yeah, especially yeah, yeah. the uh, re- uh, regurgitation track, uh-huh. the pap smear, the necrophagia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah those were the especially the necrophagia one. That right, was the right. fucking mind blower, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know that, and uh, you know the blood feast was alright to me, but at the same, yeah. that necrophagia was so different. The right, vocals right, were right. so much different. The yeah, song yeah. was so much shorter than all the other songs. It was right, less right. metal sounding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, the, I mean these speed metal hell exactly it would dream death. But yeah, some of the stuff you know sometimes they would intermingle a band that was like a little more metal, you know, and I was right. like, eh, I'm just. But you know, as as when you're young, you just play the record ass to ass. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. So right the right. needle drops. You listen to the whole side. Put the other side on. You always like the first song on both sides because that's the one you hear the most. You know? Did did you find like uh, when you got, you know how like like I said we were talking about earlier when you get older and you get like a more of a heavy metal sensibility? Were you ever able to go back to those records and go like, ah, hey, these songs are not that bad? Um, I need to. <laughs> yeah, because like you know, like because like I think you know, like I mean, there's a lot of things that like I heard when I was in the throes of like punk rock or like death metal, and I was like, I don't want to hear this. And now yeah. I go like, yeah, this Saxon record. You know what? Really- As beyond, um, I would say if I went back to the songs that I didn't like then, I probably wouldn't like them now because I yeah. don't. My heavy metal sensibility is very, like, small. 
You know how yeah. there was like a resurgence of like metal in Europe, say? And there was yeah, all yeah. these metal bands and steel this and yeah, yeah, iron yeah. that and that. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't I don't like any of that stuff. Like okay. I, I like death metal, man. I like like okay. new death metal demos. Right, right, right. You know, I don't like you know, I ha- I don't really listen to Morbid Angel, Cannibal Corpse, any of that type of stuff. Oh, but wow. I will listen to more underground stuff. Right, right, so, right. And then as far as like heavy metal stuff, you know, if I'm like you, like I'll, I'll go back to Judas Priest, you know, like okay, when you talk yeah. about artists, it's just like, I, you know what, I'll, if I want to listen to fucking metal, dude, I'm going to put on some Judas Priest right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm not too, you know, I like, occasionally I like a little bit of nostalgic metal, like a, you know, maybe like a municipal waste at a show, but not yeah. to listen to, you know? Yeah, I don't. I don't really listen to Waste that much. Uh, I mean, at a show, they were fucking awesome. Oh, they're, they're they're really great. And uh, Dave is like the greatest drummer. Oh, like definitely, fucking awesome. Exactly. Yeah, Francisco knows these guys. Both these are the other guys I live cast with. They're like Roy loves power metal. <laughs> Omen is Roy's favorite band because every time they play it, I'm like, oh, Omen. Yeah, no Omen. I mean, just not, I'm just not in, I'm just not into it. And I mean, I, I just will say it out loud. Yeah, yeah. Like, I just don't like it that much. You know, it's, it sounds weak to me. I was just, I'd watching, rather listen I was to just Judas watching Priest. Alan from Primordial's uh, YouTube channel. And he was, he did a thing on Manowar. And uh, Manowar was always one of his bands I really wanted to like, because it's mm. so stupid. Like, I'm like, <laughs> if this was great, this would be so much fun. But it's just not. It just doesn't do it, you know. But of course, like yeah. he's a huge fan, and I'm always I I like I like one of my favorite things is people with hot takes. I love hot takes, you know. Uh-huh. Even I, if I don't agree with you, it's even better. It's just great, you know. I don't I just like you got to have like you got to have Don Don of the Dead on. That guy's got hot takes. Oh, he got a hot take Dave. for a lot of shit. <laughs> Rest in peace, Jim Lasagna, too. He had a hot take for everything, dude. Jim yeah, Kanda. yeah. Yeah, like, he had a hot take on everything, man. Uh, a really good video is uh, uh, Justin from Hell's Headmangers interviewing Don and Scott from Cyanide. It's fucking hilarious. It's hmm. so great. This hot takes galore. It's amazing. Real, metal, the- real men play on 10. Yeah, yeah. I, was I remember, born I, I metal remember yeah, that's another record there was I, metal. I took it home and I was like, I was like, no. <laughs> In the Glory Ride, I do like a lot. I still think it's a pretty good record. I only really like the first, I guess it was the first Man of War, because when I would go on tour with uh, this guy and uh, John McAtee, yeah. we would listen to the first Man of War record. Eventually, I got into that one, I think. That was the only one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. me and Ronnie Dio would be in the back, and he's like, "Do you like this?" I'm like, "I like this record. I don't know I, about I, anything dude, else." I, they're one of those bands. I had like four or five tapes, and I would just do like a ritual, like every year. So let me give this another try time. it again. Yeah. Let's try it again, and it's like ten minutes. And I was like, "No, I can't." Do it. And and I yeah. like it. And I like I like heavy metal, you know. Like, I love that the first Wolf record the swedish band i love that record actually like the first three wolf records and that's just heavy metal like they were doing that before anybody was doing it again you know that whole resurgence of right heavy, like they they were like what are they they were on that camp like what are these guys doing why are they doing this but now i you know but they ended up being right in a way because they were just were the first guys doing that what about um where are you in the doom zone Oh, I, I like a lot. I like a lot of that stuff. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I like Electric Wizard a lot. Uh, I'm trying to think. What, I just, you know, I just kind of dove back in the I Hate God because I had Dope Sick and I never really liked it that much. I appreciated it, but I didn't like it. And now I'm like, yeah, this is great. And I'm actually one of those weird people. Like, I like those first two Iron Monkey records a lot. And everybody who's in the I Hate God are like, well, they're just the Iron, they're just a I Hate God rip off band. God copy band. And I'm like, I guess, but I just, these records are catchier and like, I don't know, I just like when them. When I was right into um, 
uh, Mike Diana to do the cover for the autopsy uh, demo CD. Oh, he okay. had sent me the he had sent me the advanced uh, drawing of the Iron Monkey cover back then. Oh, the the second one with the girl. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Whatever that's one great. he drew for. Right, right. It was like two but pictures that... like taped together, and it was like this is you know he made like two yeah, photocopies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and that guy's, that guy's vocals are are some of the most extreme vocals ever. You can't understand one word he's saying. It's like. It's insane. It's really yeah. great. You like any other like Rise Above and like Witchcraft? Uh, I mean, I'm I'm, of... I'm I'm a big I, I'm a big Cathedral stand. I know like that's a band <laughs> that's like very splits people. Like they people don't like it. I love it. I think it's great. I, I, and you know, and again, like I'm an old guy, right? So like I grew up on like Aerosmith and Kiss and Van Halen. So when a lot of the bands started getting into the rock and roll stuff. I knew what they were doing. Like, right. Like, so like, I like, like, like ghost, like entombed, like entombed. <laughs> or entombed. I like it all. Or like, Zizma. I like it all. You know, first Carpet. cathedral. Definitely dude. What about yeah. what we didn't talk about is you got any like guilty pleasures or anything on the other music? Maybe that's not metal. Well, I'm, I'm a big glam rock fan. Okay. I like a lot of like not I mean I'm talking about seventies glam, like right. Bowie, T Rex, not not poison. I'm talking oh, about Oh, that's like, the stuff I like too though. Yeah, like the New York dolls, like that kind of stuff. And I really like a lot of stuff that's come that you get on like these comps of like seven inches. And some of that stuff is like sounds like the Archies, but every right. once in a while like you get a really good weird song. Like me and my friend Scott, we he turned me on this uh, band, The Plod. They have like one little EP, and there's a song called uh, Neo, City, "Neo City." It's fucking amazing. It's great. Um, yeah, so I like that stuff. Uh, you know, I mean, I, you know, I, I love Susie and the Banshees. Uh, yeah, I love Bauhaus. I like the One clash. thing I didn't ask you about too. What about um, did movies in any way influence anything you did? It's it, well, it's funny. Like, you know, when I people who are into harm, I, I like horror movies. But I'm when I meet people who are into horror movies, I go like, I guess I don't like horror movies because <laughs> these people really like horror movies. You know, I mean, like the obvious things, like stuff like uh, uh, John Carpenter's The Thing is like huge. You know, I mean, come on, it's just yeah. One of the, greatest things ever but but generally and and we get me going i'll start i'll say i don't like horror movies but then i'll start listing a bunch of a horror bunch movies you, you like. know what i mean but like most of the time i don't seek out horror movies i like dramas a lot you know like uh, right you know i mean you know i like some sci-fi stuff you know with blade runner of course you know that that kind of stuff cool. solaris you know uh but but i i don't go you know, like, like somebody like Putrid Matt, like he goes deep into like all that stuff. I mean, I could go deep in. I feel like I need to do a different podcast for that. Right, stage. right. Because after I had done a couple like Halloween version uh, episodes or horror episode on here, I was like, you know what, man, I could do my own fucking horror one if I yeah, wanted yeah. to. I should. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. You know, everything is about a name. You know. Right, right, it's, right. It's right. Uh, John Verica said, "What odds are it is his name is Drew? Drew, as in Drew, <laughs> just meant to be. It's just meant, to, meant be. to be, man. Yeah, Swans. Yeah. Yep. Season of the Banshees. Liebach. Once this stream's over, Frasers uh, will be on Metal Ben's Chronicle channel. Okay. <laughs> cool. So, do you like Entombed at all? Yeah, he said he loves Clandestine." I, I yeah I was I was saying I I think we might have talked over talk, I I like it all actually okay yeah. yeah you like the rock and stuff too I you know again again you know talking to somebody like Don with his hot takes you know but I like it all yeah. I like all carcass I like it all you know the and, um, you I know love. just to just to put the whole like uh you know the whole um the whole show in perspective with your art I mean where do you see yourself you know do you see yourself like you know how like they say artists get recognitions like in death basically do you see yourself like in like that or does anyone think about that or does anyone i don't know like i i i don't really think about it. i mean like um 
Because you've got a, like, you got a massive body of work, basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's like I said, it comes in waves. You know, like there was a period where like uh, a bunch of like younger people were like seem to be appreciating what I had done. Right. You know, like I, I, you know, like when I met, when I met Henry Yoon from uh, Electric Assault and Impure, uh, you know, like that whole crew of people, like, I I guess the nexus is uh, when, you know, the festival Live Evil that was based on like Fenry's metal band of the week. So that's familiar. Fenris used to do a blog called Band of the Week. Right. Yes. And then a guy in England did a festival based on that blog. So okay. a lot of those young bands like played that festival. I think that festival is like the first ghost appearance was at that festival because Fenris liked that seven inch a lot. But like uh, Obliteration was there, you know, a uh, this band Salute was there, which is one of my favorite bands. Uh, nature was there. Okay, so all these oh, bands, yeah, they were all there. And then Henry was there. And then Henry started booking shows with those bands to the United States. So all those people started coming over. Oh, In Solitude played that too. Mm. And they were like a big, they, they were big for me. Like they're, they're, that band was a great young band, you know. Uh, Missed that for sure, but anyway, like, so all that wave of like kids were coming over and they were staying with me and my wife Mm. when they played, and so, like, it was like a renewed interest, you know, it kind of got me kind of going, like, oh, I'm still part of this scene, like, you know, there's a new wave of people who like like what I'm doing, and um, that's been really great, and then, like, now I feel like you know old heads to young people know who i am and appreciate what i did i have to say it's all good just to bring this up like some of these artworks like say this or something you know and some of the stuff that's at the 2003 2023 and 2024 level stuff that you did yeah it's fucking amazing dude with coloring and shit yeah dude like thank you Thank so I, I, I see kind of like a new, like maybe, <laughs> I wanted to say a new renaissance. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's right. something I see there that like you, you've evolved, but well, like, you know, you're still not using a computer yeah, yeah, to do yeah. it well, either. That's what I was saying. Like, you know... no, no. Am I mean, I, right? I, I mean, I do use a computer for okay. certain things, but most of mo- everything is mostly organic. Like, right. Like if you see that, like the only, like this this guy, right? This 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 figure, and this, these are two separate drawings. Oh okay. And they were put together on, on the. Oh okay. You, so you just you. I got you. I so got it's you. like it's this. It was like this, and then I put this guy in there on a separate mm, drawing. Got so, the, so that's that's about the level of computer I use. Well, that's not, you know, that's not drawing. And I tweak drawing, colors but... sometimes. You don't yeah, yeah, draw that's not, with the yeah, computer. But, no. but I'm just, just full of No, no, I don't draw with Yeah, you want to be fully transparent. Like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just, just, yeah, yeah. It's like, you never draw there's like with the computer, like, right? Have you ever tried that type of, no, like, no, the drawing no, I don't with do, the... No, I don't do that. I, I'm not against it. I don't do it. I just don't have the technology to do it. And I, I and I like, and I like, I like the, the physical stuff I, I, you know sure i mean i know yeah. that, that would be i, I can like a good question for you as a, as a the long term of your art itself and the originals do you have like a repository of some of your own stuff of the originals or do I, all the it, originals go to different people because they unfortunately were the, originals? the old stuff i don't have because the i think the the deal mostly was you know, we didn't really have it written out. I, I pretty much gave the stuff to Anne. Right. And I asked for it. The story that she gave me was that during the L.A. riots, when their office was downtown, some stuff got ruined in the fire. I'm not saying I don't believe that, but I sort of 
don't believe, you know, I, I, right. whatever. But, you know, what am I going to do about it? Sure, <laughs> stop. You know, yeah, yeah. There's nothing, <laughs> really nothing I can do about it. You know, yeah. it's fine. You know, and who knows how well she, and the, the only thing that bums me out about it is like there were paintings that I did that never got used. Mm. And it would be nice to have them. Like, uh, I did this Nosferatu painting for necrophagia. I did two two paintings. One was for, supposed to be for a picture disc. There were two picture discs we we're doing, and I don't think they ever came out. And I don't huh. have those paintings, so that I would like to see them. But again. They're probably not as good as I remember them, but and I then think... also that necrophagia ready for death thing. You didn't draw that, right? But that doesn't look like your work. The the the, the weird like uh, let me see. The, I want yeah. to call it. <laughs> I think he's got it. I got it. So everyone that's stayed tuned in this whole time, I appreciate it too. All my loyal death metal podcast watchers, Drew's awesome, right? And this has been a killer episode. He's digging into his necrophagia vault now. So I appreciate you guys for definitely, um, yeah, this is the. Talking uh, about this thing? Yeah, I didn't, it doesn't look like your no, work, that's so. Me. That's not me, that's before me. That's before me. Oh, and it's I, before you. And I, and I can't figure out who the hell it is. No, me neither. There's no credit for it, you know? Yeah, there's no credit. And I, I tried looking it up just, just out of curiosity, like, who did this? Yeah. And, uh, Nobody, I don't think, I don't think Renee knows either, you know, and like, yeah, why would she, she wasn't does. even born, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, um, yeah, it's like. Everyone's saying how awesome this was for an episode, an interview, definitely. Oh, Drew, cool, man. man. I like, seriously, bro, like, you have, you have, you're steeped in it, man. When you said that you were at that same carcass show that I was at, I was like, holy fuck, dude, like. <laughs> We've been at like a, you know around each other a long time. Yeah, dude. yeah. Even like say I go to St. Vitus to a show or something, and there you are with your woman. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's cool, yeah, dude. You yeah, know, yeah. So it feels, you know, it feels good to see like a, the familiar face and right. You know right, what I mean? Right. Like we we both, you know, we're both still here. You know. Well, that I mean, like I said, that's the thing that's really awesome is like this. This world is tiny. This this community is small. Yes. So, you know, like when I go to when I go to Europe, you know, people know who I am. It's nice. You know? Yeah. You know, and then Fred from Dismember, he, you know, he was in New York for a while. Like I would see him all the time. And right. You I mean, doing was doing sound there over there, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it was great. You know, like, like, you know, he's excited to meet me. I'm like, OK, cool. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, it's the other way around, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, OK. Yeah, great. I'll take it, you know. It's yeah. Awesome. Same thing would with you um would you like in the, you know, if um if people were, you know, heading towards your Instagram or you know, would you do more shirt designs and arts? And... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like I said, like I mean, I, you know, I, I, I you know, I I I get a little picky, at, you know, my old age. You know, I'm not going to just do stuff for everybody. Understandable. And I do have a full time and I do have a full time job, so like, you know, my time is you know, I, I catch catch them when I can, you know, like right. hour here and hour there, you know. Um but yeah, yes. I mean, you know, if if you're in a band that like especially in a band that I might know and you're there interested, you that would be great, you know, like uh I mean if you're a young band and you're you know, if I think you're okay. I don't really like being, you know, you never, nobody likes to be the guy that says not into this. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you know, whatever. No, I, I get it. I mean, put it I this put way. Out I will, releases, I will so. tell you, I won't ghost you. I will tell you like, not, not, not ready. And I, and I have a project that I'm working on right now that, uh, yeah, I'm not going to say what it is, but um, yeah, like I'm going to be hungered down for at least the next month trying oh, to get this cool. thing done. And, um, but yeah, yeah, like, you know, like, it, hit me up. Let's see, you know. Cool, man. Work something out. Yeah, cool. I mean, I figured for anyone that's watching this on this play or the replay, you know, they're interested. And in you, I mean, like I said, you, you get the pedigree, man. Like, you made amazing stuff in 1987 
But then, you know, some of those uh, albums from 2019, 20, 21, like, and some of the newer art that I see, just just at, the, say, the top of your Instagram. Right, is right. It's fucking phenomenal, dude. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> you know, like, I'm like, damn, man, like, Drew just keeps, like, I want to say reinventing yourself, but, like, but not, yeah, I mean, you know? Like, like, I mean, what I'm doing, I think what I'm doing now is, like, I'm kind of trying to, like, close the gap between the past like you know like you'll see like i'll go like uh like there's like this skeleton with a mohawk on at the top of my page and you know like that was and oh and that when you when you look at the second picture there's a picture from my zine that gordon me and gordon did so like that's that's where that so i know i have that zine around here somewhere i just don't know where it is right but yeah but um but yeah, so like I'd be like, okay, like I, I like this the vibes of this era, but now I can do it a little bit you better. Reinvent it a little. Let bit. me see. Let me see. And I'm trying to have fun. And you know how like when you're young, you're having fun doing stuff. Definitely. And I'm trying to reconnect with that fun element of what I'm doing, you know. And so like that's one of the other things you know with bands that ask me to do things like don't tell me a million things. Oh, it has to have one cat standing on its back legs and another, you know, like, I got you. You know what I mean? Like a million, like you like to like, keep things simplified. That's a not fun. Bit. Like, like just, just tell me the broad strokes. Like I said before, something from my, ins- give me some a map with the Instagram and then, we'll go from there you know did you do anything for the plasmatics your art fucking rules i wish i, <laughs> I knew no, you were gonna no. say that yeah i mean you know like i mean when when i was in la i guess that what is that record maggots i think that's the record that came out about that time but that's like that's that's near the end you know yeah yeah, yeah that's that's not the end so. cool man so, yeah yeah this has been awesome uh drew awesome, i appreciate man. you brother awesome dude so yeah i i i wanted to like i i feel like that you are part of death metal basically so and you you uh, know thanks, even man. though it was thrash to death you know like yeah, yeah. you know necrophagy and one of the first death metal records in a weird way absolutely absolutely so and you being the artist on it is like i felt like it'd be important to have you on death metal podcast just awesome. for people that haven't heard about you or just don't really know the man behind the myth, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything yeah. I didn't show that you weren't credited for, maybe, that you are like, fuck, no one ever credits me for that? Um, <laughs> no, not, no, not really. I mean, like, like you know, if some some things are uncredited, I'm like, okay, it's best left uncredited. That's why, okay, that's why I asked about that necrophagia. Yeah, yeah, but, but, um, but no, not really. I, you know, like, like I said, I wish I had some of the old zine stuff, you know, like, but yeah. I don't have that stuff anymore. You know, the stuff that I gave, like, uh, this guy, Jim Blanchard, he did a zine called Blotch. And then there was a zine in San Diego called Black Market. I did right. stuff for them. Yeah, I tried to look uh, for art from there, but I didn't, couldn't find any. Yeah, it's it's on their page, on their Instagram page. There's a there's a there's one of my pieces on there. Gotcha. Uh, there's more in there, but I guess he just hasn't scanned it yet. Mm. And um, I, I'm glad he I'm glad he's put it on there because that was that was a pretty good zine. Cool. Um, but yeah, you know, yeah, man. there's tons of stuff all, all over the place. So if anyone else has any questions, we're gonna wrap this up though. Uh, we appreciate you, Drew, man. Like Thanks, your fucking man. interview was awesome. Thank you. Know, you. You definitely put some insight on a lot of different covers that you did. Right. And, um, you know, like, like I said, man, you're fucking awesome, dude. You know? Awesome. Yeah. I agree. Uh, that's Motorhead's album without, without a Joe Pentago. It has its place. <laughs> okay. I knew both of those dudes. Maggots is greater than rain <laughs> and blood. <laughs> <laughs> Someone saying, thanks, hot Drew. Take. Great I show. I love, hot, I love hot takes. That's a good yep. hot take. Any hot takes for Drew, man? <laughs> so you anyone lurking that wants to say what's up or uh so i i want to say what's up to people that have been watching the show uh we are spirits in the asshole world richard santos tony shinobi chris grant necron papson 
uh, Carl Codger, DOA, Craig, Ian, um, who else? Zero, uh, um, John Verica, appreciate you, man. Uh, JRR Tolkien, Gordon. Hey. Thank you for the input, Gordon. We appreciate it. Yeah, Gordy. I love stuff like that. Um, let's see who Jeff uh, Chapman, um, everybody that uh, was uh, Depeche Commode, um, Shadow, Shadow, Cap Rap, uh, Jim, uh, Justin Wilde, Vacuous Depths, Drew Elliott. We, uh, no balone we, we appreciate you guys coming on too because again this is a fucking community show and drew is the man appreciate you drew um you know this has been an episode of death metal podcast and i appreciate that you came on man uh, thank you for drawing Dude. the thing too bro because that oh, was like that, a man, no problem, man. Lower for me man just you inspired me. What can I tell you? That's cool, man. I'm glad, dude. And I want, you know, I want something that, you know, I want to. Oh, you need a book. That's something I did want to say. You need a book of collected work. People have been Drew. telling me that lately. Yeah. People are telling me that, too. <laughs> hey, Drew, you rule. Remember, son, at FUC Philly 2005? I was selling your t shirts. Oh, nice. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elsa Esqua Smoke. Nice. Cool, man. Yeah, Drew is the GOAT, dude. <laughs> so, we appreciate you, man. All right, dude. Thanks, Drew. All right. You said, you're like, I can only talk an hour. I don't want to talk about myself. I'm like, I get this guy. Well, we didn't open up. talk about myself. We talked about, like, death metal. It was great. Yeah, man. All right, All right. Drew. I appreciate you, man. All right, thanks, Thank you, man. man. All right, take All right, care. All right, so this has been Death Metal Podcast. With our special guest, Drew Elliott. Um, super sick episode. Drew is the man, basically. And we are signing out for tonight. Uh, everybody, uh, tune in uh, next Saturday. We're going to have an episode with uh, Noxious, Ruin, uh, Noxious Ruins Records and Productions. They do a magazine, a label, an art magazine, comp tapes. All kinds of cool stuff. So uh, next Saturday, an interview with uh, Brian from Noxious Ruin. So definitely tune into that. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate everybody that, um, yeah, definitely. This is all about history, man. I, I want Death Metal Podcast to be a historical show. So that's basically what I think it became, man. So I, I'm a mission accomplished. All right, and I'll, I'll check you guys out. Let me bring... Um, this off i'll check you guys out next saturday at the noxious ruin uh i was gonna say a show but it is a show so i'll check you out at the show and then we say out of here later